From Charlotte, North Carolina, Fox Sports welcomes you to the 63rd running of the Coca-Cola 600. Part of the world's greatest day of motorsports, Monaco, Indianapolis, Charlotte. And part of our most solemn holiday weekend as we race to remember. Amidst the pageantry, we're high atop the start-finish line at Charlotte. I'm Mike Joy, along with Charlotte NASCAR Cup winners, Jamie McMurray and Clint Boyer. 600 miles. It's always been, since 1960, the longest race on the NASCAR schedule. Sure, it's physically demanding, but how is this race mentally? Well, you said it, Mike. Physically, you can train for the mental side of it. It's hard to put all that together for four-plus hours. We saw guys running right up against the wall yesterday. You don't want to tear your car up. You don't want to get into somebody else. You don't want to lose your composure on the racetrack. you got to save your car so it's going to be there at the end. No, no mistakes on pit road, Clint. Make sure you've put your car in a position the last half of this race that you have a shot at winning. You know, for me on this special holiday, it's you know you, you think about uh, a fallen hero, and then when you think about that, for me, you think about family, the family behind that service member, and for me, the families being here represented and and being uh, honored just alongside that fallen hero, it's so special to have them riding on board with us on these race cars, and uh, it's just something you always remember and you look forward to meeting those family members every year, and we will share some of those fallen servicemen and women stories as we go through the 600 miles tonight. Jared Schmidt, Marine Lance Corporal from Wentzville, Missouri, was lost in Kabul, Afghanistan at the age of 20. He is riding with Denny Hamlin tonight. How about you, Denny Hamlin? It's Boyer and the boys up in the Fox Sports One booth. Where you got us? I got gotcha. you. All right, man, I know you're going to give Lance Corporal Smiths a ride. It'll make him proud starting up front. How are you going to keep it up front all night long? Yeah, I think uh, we've got a good FedEx Camry. Um, really, all the photos have been really strong all weekend. And just uh, it's all about execution, honestly, and keeping the car you know, updated, trying to keep this thing uh, adapting to the track at all times, because I think we're definitely going to have some different conditions that are going to get thrown at us. For sure. We're going to wish you luck. We're looking forward to it. All right. Thanks, guys. Here's our Coca-Cola starting grid. Denny Hamlin on the pole. The Virginian looking for his first Charlotte win. And Kurt Busch, the outside pole winner. They're separated by three one thousandths of a second. Busch, the 2010 600 winner, won the last point race at Kansas. Row two, Christopher Bell on a three race top six streak for the Oklahoman and Kyle Busch from Nevada the 2018 600 winner the top four all Toyotas the first Chevy is William Byron from Charlotte finished fourth last year the first Ford is rookie Austin Sindrick this year's Daytona 500 winner Bubba Wallace in row number four with his best start of the season and Tyler Reddick has come oh so close but still looking for his first win Row five, fifth in the 600 last year for Arizona's Alex Bowman in a Chevrolet. And Michael McDowell's Ford gets its best start ever in the 600. And across the bottom of the screen will be the rest of our starting lineup. Let's get some last minute updates uh, beginning in the nerve center for Fox, Larry McReynolds. Yeah, Mike, this 600 mile race will give a crew chief a headache that won't go away for about three weeks. It's the most temperature sensitive racetrack we go to. Ever changing, as you heard Denny Hamlin say, crew chiefs have to be aggressive and make adjustments all race long. But going in, Mike, I have to have a plan. I have to have a strategy, a starting point. And that leads me to my Verizon race strategy. Remember, this is a race that has four stages, 100 laps per stage. What you're going to do is you're going to split the stages in half. Pit 50, 50, 50, and 50 into each of those stages. But Vince Welch, thank the good Lord I put it in pencil. It's probably going to look different at the end of the night. Yeah, make sure you've got that eraser ready, too, Larry, that's for sure. Hey, you know, most of these drivers here in this race tonight live here in the Charlotte area now. But for 24-year-old William Byron, this is his hometown. He's been coming to races here well before he was old enough to race, much less become a NASCAR star himself. He told me he has an extra sense of pride when he races here. And he'd like nothing more than to make that short drive home tonight with that trophy in the seat next to him. Regan Smith. 
Vince, two weeks ago at Kansas, it was an impressive win for Kurt Busch, driving for 23-11, racing the team co-owned by Denny Hamlin and Michael Jordan. The team had some bad luck leading up to that race in the weeks prior. They feel like they have shaken that luck, and they are carrying a ton of momentum into Charlotte this week at a place that Kurt has won before. Look for Kurt Busch to be up front and strong all night long in that 45. Jamie? Well, are you sitting at home watching this broadcast wondering, who should I root for? Well, what about the number eight of Tyler Reddick? We like to call him Mr. Excitement. Why? Because you can guarantee he will be the first driver to move up to the wall and hang it out. Now, in his two previous starts here in the Coke 600, he finished in the top 10. He qualified in the top 10 tonight. He's trying to become just the eighth driver to win his first career race right here at the Coke 600, Mike. Thanks, Jamie. Pace car has the field in tow as the cars came down pit road to check pit road speed. And at the very back is the driver who dominated last year's 600, winning all the stages and the race, Kyle Larson, who got into trouble in practice yesterday. The team worked till 1030 last night. They came in the garage early, and this is the same car, albeit repaired from yesterday's practice crash. Here's the team debrief as he got ready to roll off. I want to take a minute to uh, honor and remember all of our military service men and women uh, who sacrificed their all, gave their all to protect our freedom. We're very honored and we're very humbled. Thank you for that. Definitely want to take a minute to remember Specialist Rivago giving his life for our country, for our freedom. Big welcome to his friends and guests that are here with us at the track today. Crew Chief Cliff Daniel. Kyle Larson's got a long way to go. He's got 600 miles to get there. Our Fox onboard camera lineup includes Kurt Busch on the outside pole with a Monster Energy Cam in his Toyota. Kyle Busch starting outside the second row with the Toyota Cam. Tyler Reddick starting outside the fourth row with the Cheddar's Cam in his Camaro. Alex Bowman will start ninth. There's the Ally camera on board his Chevrolet. Last week's All-Star Million Dollar Man, Ryan Blaney, starts 11th. That's the Ford onboard camera in his Mustang. And the 99 Chevy starts 12th. The Tootsie's camera rides with Daniel Suarez. Here's the Mahindra Tractors camera with Chase Briscoe in the 14, starting 15. Former champ Kevin Harvick, or rather Ross Chastain, that's the Advent Health Cam starting 21st. This is Joey Logano with the Coca-Cola camera starting 22nd. Tightening up the belts and let's go back and pick up 18th place. That is past champion Kevin Harvick with the Mobile One camera on board his Ford. Ready to roll in Charlotte. They're in turn three behind the 2022 300 plus horsepower Toyota Camry TRD. It's the only cup race with four stages, 100 laps apiece. After each stage, caution will wave. Pit road will be open. Drivers will receive points. We'll line them back up and do it again. I'm telling you, just being down there on, on the grid, Jamie, this track is hot. It's very hot and slick. These boys are going to have to be careful. A lot of transitioning, keeping up with that racetrack, as you heard Larry talk about. It all comes. It's time, baby. The Coca-Cola 600 is underway. Chris Lambert, Denny Hamlin spotter. They were there, two by two. Who will lead the first lap? Hamlin by one one hundredth of a second. I think you're going to see the battle with these Toyotas all night long, but already what I like to see that Tyler Reddick up there three wide exercising that outside line, Jamie. Yeah, and the one thing that stuck out to me, Clint, was the start of the race. Denny Hamlin chose the outside. 
but it appears that the inside's just as good. The, the way they have this resin on the track for both lanes, right now it looks like there's not really a lane that's cho is better than the other. Top, bottom, middle, three lanes wide through turns three and four. Well, the resin is applied, and it, was, it wasn't reapplied, more importantly, but it is applied for traction compound, if you will. It is making traction in different parts of the racetrack, opening up those grooves to the outside, and then enabling those guys to get to the outside and make passes. I think that's exactly why you see this drag race at Denny Hamlin yeah. and Kurt Busch running in the outside lane and that bottom lane, holding strong for both sides. It, it's almost like somebody forgot to tell them it's 600 miles long, Clint, yeah. trying to figure out who wants to lead this. It just appears that the well, bottom lane talk. is good through the middle of the corner, but Denny then gets that big run on the exit. It looks like he's finally going to clear him. Yeah, Kurt slipped up on the bottom, gave Denny that run on the outside. Look, speaking of runs, look at Tyler Reddick making the run. Hook in the bottom. Seventh place there. Driver Denny Hamlin, the leading car owner Denny Hamlin with Kurt Busch and Kyle Busch right behind. And it might be a 600 mile race, Jamie, but it is so important to beat that guy to that clean air. Clean air is king at this race, Jack. We all know that. And him beating him to the punch and getting that clean air, that's going to help him in this whole stage. Sets a tone for the race. Here's the other Denny Hamlin, Michael Jordan entry. That's the 23, Bubba Wallace in fourth place. You know, Clint, we've been talking about it for, for months, and, and you said it, the, the Toyotas, especially Joe Gibbs Racing, seems to always show up when we get to Charlotte. And the fact that 2311 gets their cars from Joe Gibbs Racing, you're seeing that also trickle down. Kurt Busch won at Kansas a few weeks ago. Bubba Wallace was fast there as well, had some pit stop issues. But again, Bubba Wallace did the tire test at this track, and it seems like some of that's paying off. Still three viable lanes coming through turn number four. Crossover, Kyle Busch to the bottom on Bubba Wallace. Candyman going all the way to second place, maybe off turn two, but Kurt Busch has the top and the run. Well, I'm really encouraged, Clint, to see Kyle Busch able to make that pass on the bottom. We saw Denny Hamlin do that in qualifying and able to capture the pole, one of the only cars that ran on the bottom. But that's a, that's different, right? The air pressures are up. You know you have max grip. We're now seven laps into this race, and you see Denny Hamlin's running up in the resin. You talked about a little more grip up there. But I'm pretty encouraged to see Kyle Busch able to get to the bottom and make those passes. Christopher Bell in that uh, indigo-colored Toyota trying to shoot the middle. These guys are very aggressive. You see Christopher Bell slip up. Now he's in the middle of the meat and the sandwich, three wide. You know, one of the hardest things to do in managing this long race, especially how it starts in the heat of the day and ends at night, is managing that air pressure, right? As a crew chief and, and uh, the guys on the box trying to, to get away when it's hot and slick like this with as minimal pressure as you possibly can, but don't get yourself in trouble. Over the course of the last few races, we've seen some guys have some tire issues, and I think that's a big uh, cause of it. Yeah, that's a great point, Clay. You want as low air pressure as you can get and you want as much camber in that left rear tire. And we did see one car, Core the Joy, have an issue in practice earlier with that. You see Kyle Busch going for the lead on the bottom again. Everybody's going to take note of that, that he's able to make those passes on the bottom. It doesn't look like Denny Hamlin put up much of a fight there. I don't know, neither did anybody else, man. He did that at <laughs> Will. Car was extremely fast yesterday in practice, last night in qualifying. I think you're going to see these guys fighting each other hard. But I'm telling you, if anybody can be a dark horse and surprise them, it's this eight car right here at Tyler Reddick. Let's go back to 22nd place. The five of Kyle Larson all repaired after starting out back. He started 36th, now running 22nd ahead of uh, Ricky Stenhouse, Ryan Priest, Chris Buescher. Kyle Busch started fourth. It took him nine laps to get to the front as his Toyota tries to drive away.
Welcome back to Charlotte Motor Speedway race fans. The Coca-Cola 600 is underway and we know this is the longest race of the year. 600 miles or to put it in perspective, that's 965 kilometers. But just how far is that? Well, if you traveled 965 kilometers from, say, Monaco, you could reach all the way to Hanover, Germany. But get this, Ryan Priest driving the number 15 here behind me. This is his third race of the weekend with the trucks on Friday, Xfinity on Saturday, and now this. He has totaled 1,793 kilometers, a distance that could take him all the way from Monaco to Oslo, Norway. That's an endurance race if I've ever seen one. Fox NASCAR is sponsored by Coca-Cola. Fifteen green flag laps complete. Kyle Busch has been out in front for the last seven. Denny Hamlin led the first eight. Kurt Busch led a lap. All Toyotas at the top of the board. How about Bubba Wallace up for second from seventh starting spot. In fact, the drivers who started one, two, three Hamlin, Kurt Busch, and Bell are now running 5th, 8th, and 7th. Tyler Reddick right behind him has picked up a few as well, but doing it in a different fashion, Jamie. Running really high right up against the wall. Trouble turn four. One car around and another slams in. Chris Busher, Ryan Priest, and Ryan Priest who had almost won the truck race Friday night and finished top five in the Xfinity race yesterday. And now Priest and Busher are together. Well, if that also involved uh, Noah Gregson, that would have been the 15, 16, and 17. And I believe it did. See Priest get loose. Car gets out from it. And then Busher right in his tire tracks did the exact same thing. It, it, it's almost Clint like he reacted to when he saw Priest getting loose, trying to get turned on the racetrack. And we talked about it yesterday. A lot of bumps right there in the middle of turns three and four. And I think Gregson did the same thing following Sue. He was just trying to get out of the way and, you know, spun to the inside. But I don't think he got in anything. And it doesn't look like there's much damage to, to any of those cars. It looks like they're all able to get back to pit road and, and get four fresh tires on. Yeah, no contact with the wall for any of those three. First caution of the day. What's the luck of that? 15, 16, and 17 all crash and nobody really wrecked. And, <laughs> and the 18 is the leader. Chase Briscoe was just glad he wasn't in the area. That's right. <laughs> He's the 14. <laughs> that should have been one of the questions in Clint's game today, but NASCAR fans, it's time to stack the cash. The more people who enter today's Fox Bet Super 6 Stage 2 contest, the bigger the jackpot will get. All you need to do is scan the QR code, download the Super 6 app, and enter your picks in the contest. Watch the jackpot grow. Right now, the prize is over $37,000. Invite your friends and make the jackpot even bigger. Vince? William Byron in just up one spot from where he started, but he really likes his race car. No changes, says it's pretty good right now, Jamie. And Bubba Wallace up five positions. Had really good start there, guys. Just a little three behind the 18. Air pressure and four tires. Tyler Reddick in the eight. Not ready for an adjustment yet. A little bit free, Regan. The message was simple from your leader, Kyle Busch. The car is really good. No changes for them. And the 11 to Denny Hamlin. That race car is too loose and on the edge right now. He needs some help. Lengthy stop for Kevin Harvick uh, as they get him finished up. Along with Ross Chastain and Eric Jones. 
first caution of the day for a three car spin in turn four. Race fans, welcome back to Charlotte Motor Speedway. Just before last break, I was mentioning the 15 of Ryan Priest. Well, he was one of three drivers just involved in that first caution of the day. You'll see the Rick Ware Racing Crew behind me is still working on this race car. Looks like minimal damage to the body, but they are under the car there within the uh, Rear left wheel making some adjustments. It looks like some internal damage, but like I said, if they can get this thing back going again, minimal damage to the outside of the car. I'll keep you updated here on the 15 of Priest as things get rolling again after our first caution of the day. Ready to restart, race leader Kyle Busch chose the inside of row one, and after the choose, here's how they'll line up. You won't see, oh, you will. All right, we're ready to roll here with uh, Martin Truex too fast exiting pit road, and Todd Gilliland having an uncontrolled tire uh, during his pit stop. Several cars were struggling on pit road, blocking, having trouble, seen it all year. It's gonna be a, a big story to keep up with in this long race. Look at this crowd, sellout of Charlotte Motor Speedway. Also, Ryan Blaney, too fast entering pit road. He restarts in the back. Derek Dillon, Tyler Reddick spotter. He is third. 
with uh, Bubba Wallace on his bumper. And now drifting up high. So the first round of pit stops is in. Let's get an update from Jamie Little. Well, Mike, the biggest concern coming in tonight for the crew chiefs were the tires. And Adam Stevens on the 20th told me last night they had blistering after 20 laps. Well, look at this. Left rear, the inside of the left rear on the 20th, Christopher Bell. It's kind of like a chunking and a blistering. So that's something they're concerned about. Definitely keeping an eye on throughout this race. Look at the uh, wrinkle on the left rear of William Byron as he fires off after this caution period on new tires. Well, you can see that that tire is low. The, the other thing is it's tilted out at the top. So, so all of the weight is on that very outside edge where you see the yellow of Goodyear is. That's what's breaking the tire down is you got so much load on it and all of the, uh, the camber that's in the tire. Bubba Wallace to second place now. Larry Mack, how much pressure will these tires gain over a run? Yeah, the left sides probably will gain anywhere from 12 to 15, Mike. And Goodyear says, please do not go under. Do not start under 22 PSI. But there's just a combination of things, how aggressive they are with the setups, the camber that Jamie McMurray mentioned, and just the higher loads that this car has on the left rear versus the old car. It just all stacks up. To Jamie's point, it hurts it in the beginning and doesn't show up to well into a run. You see these guys racing side by side, the five of Kyle Larson and the 47, Ricky Sinhouse Jr. I'm telling you, I expected that five car to get up through the field, make pretty work out of it, but that 47 is following suit just like him. Moving, boys. Them guys are getting up through the field. Larson restarted 18th, up 23 since the start of the race, up five since this restart. Now, Bubba Wallace has raced his way up to second place. He and crew chief Booty Barker talking tires. Freddie, you got a you got some slight chunking on the inside of the left rear. I don't know what he does to be non abusive to it. Probably a hot racetrack, you know? Fourth place, Tyler Reddick, way up the racetrack and almost scrubbing the wall uh, through turn number three. Well, and I saw Reddick run the bottom for the first couple of laps, and as soon as Bubba Wallace got his outside past him, he immediately went to the top. We know Reddick, Kyle Larson are as good as you can get going around the top of the track. Yeah, as we ride along, now he tries the bottom. <laughs> At the end of the day, you can't go through him. You know, William Byron's up there in front of him running the outside. Tyler Reddick, he's got that dirt background. I love that. Search around on this racetrack. But this is what we were talking about, folks. You can see him rolling into the corner high, runs the wall all the way down, comes off of it just a little bit. Well, and the one thing about running high is it's better when the sun's out. When it's hot, like we saw in the Xfinity race yesterday, we saw all those guys run the top. When the track is hot and slick, it just seems like the top of the track is where you want to be. As it cools down and as we get closer to the night, I think you're going to see all those cars start to migrate back to the bottom. Well, turn three gets the most sunshine of any spot on this racetrack. Turn one, the least. And the difference in temperature of the asphalt can be more than 30 degrees one to the other. Yeah, but look at the glare. That glare is what, something that really hurts you. It's very uh, blinding. But also you see the rubber starting to build up on the, on the windshields. And as that gets worse and worse and that sun keeps going down, telling you turn three gives these drivers fits yeah and it's it's not just the rubber building up on there it's, it's that the the tear off that's on the front of that car it gets like sandblasted from the from the small stones on the track and that makes it even more difficult to see Kyle Busch leading Bubba Wallace by three quarters of a second a lot of members of our nation's military here as guests of Charlotte Motor Speedway
Welcome back to Charlotte Motor Speedway. The 18 of Kyle Busch currently pacing the field. Joe Gibbs Racing having started on the pole with Denny Hamlin and now leading laps with Kyle Busch off to a strong start here in today's Coca-Cola 600. As far as history goes in this race for JGR, they only have three Coke 600 wins, all three of those coming in the last seven years. With four cars in today's field, they do have a good shot at getting win number four in this event here today. Racing to remember at Charlotte Motor Speedway on Memorial Day weekend. We are under caution for a spin by Josh Balicki in the 77 up in turn three as we went to break. And pit road is open. Vince. The 24 of William Byron just a tick snug, so they're going to make a slight air pressure adjustment. Otherwise, pretty happy with that 24 right now. Jamie. Tyler Reddick in the eight just said he was much tighter that run. They figured they'll just make an adjustment. A little problem on the right rear there, Regan. Denny Hamlin started the race too loose. Good adjustments on the last stop, though. Happy with that race car right now. Some concern from the driver, though. He feels like he is down on power. Maybe something not right there. Another problem for Kevin Harvick. They had a slow stop the first time. This time he had to back up uh, to get a clean launch out of his pit stall. Jamie? Well, so far, Mike, we've all mentioned tires. Well, the 23 driver in second right now, Bubba Wallace, he doesn't want to hear it. Don't let me know about tires. That deal, it's way too mental for me. I don't, if it goes, she goes. It's fine. I'll need to be spending time worrying about it. Appreciate it, but I don't need it. Yeah, simple. <laughs> Josh Balicki spun to bring out the caution. Uh, racing to remember Marine Lance Corporal James Ray Davenport from Danville, Indiana, lost in Iraq at age 20. When the Humvee he was driving ran over an improvised explosive device, killing him and two other Marines. Out of race, Ryan Priest uh, involved in the first incident. He was racing to remember Army Sergeant First Class Gary Harper of Verdon, Illinois, uh, who was lost in Iraq at age 29. Kyle Larson, currently 11th. He has raced his way up from the tail end of the field after a practice crash yesterday. I was watching the stop. You watch the guy in the left front 
I couldn't tell what trouble he had, but he follows this car as he goes out. I don't know if he got that on. And since the lug wrench, the center lock wheel wrench, and the air hose left the pit stall with the car, that is considered removing equipment and will be a penalty. Are we okay? I saw a left rod or something. Yeah, both guys are okay. Left rod's on. I don't got to be really careful. It is city. City feels good about it. We're going to check the video all in really quick. Well, he's not going to like the next radio communication that's telling him to go to the back. I tell you what, he was marching through the field and got up, but I, it, it was lucky that that tire changer wasn't connected to the air wrench. You could see him follow that car out of the deal. He did a good job of getting the lug nut on. America's gold star families are those that have lost a family member in military service to our country. Earlier today, Coca-Cola hosted a luncheon to honor and recognize gold star families. Here's Coca-Cola Racing family member Joey Logano with more. This Memorial Day weekend, Coca-Cola and NASCAR are coming together to honor and remember the military men and women that have sacrificed so much for our freedom. We were invited to honor our son, Jerry Schmitz. We are new to NASCAR. This is our first race ever, but I am absolutely amazed by the patriotism of this sport. Cleaning up the second caution of the day for Josh Balicki's spin. Chris Buescher gets the free pass, which goes to the highest placed car, not on the lead lap at the time of caution. Uh, so Buescher gets to pass the pace car, come around, and he's back on the lead lap. You know, Mike, that caution again came at an interesting time. We had five drivers that stayed out. Kyle Busch, Bubba Wallace, Christopher Bell, Chase Briscoe, and Cole Custer. We only had 10 laps on the tires. Not that we're going to go to the end of this stage caution free, but if you did pit right there, you can make it on fuel to the end of this stage. You know, Clint, the one thing that sticks out to me here is that Kyle Busch chose the inside on the last restart. He won it before they got to turn one. It wasn't a contest. He has now chosen the outside. That tells me he's just trying to figure out where he wants to be later in this race, which lane is going to work better for him. Well, the other aspect of that is that teammate behind him and Chris Rebell lining up. You know, I, I think you're only as good as the help behind you. But I do agree from my experience of this racetrack, that outside line was always hard to get a hold of. You know, the bottom, you're able to keep a much straighter drive and, and get the car hooked up. So can Bell give Bush a push down toward turn number one? Ready for the restart, Bush and Wallace on the front row. Well, there's the push we talked about, but it isn't enough. Bubba Wallace gets a run on the inside. Man, the 14th really shot up the racetrack, Chase Briscoe four wide as a result. Side by side for the lead. Well, and then you see those, you see him three wide there in the middle of, of three and four. It looks like Alex Bowman on the bottom. But when we watch this battle for the lead, Bubba Wallace on the inside, Kyle Busch on the outside, it's all about timing out the momentum of getting into the corner. You want to, if you're Bubba Wallace on the inside, you want to have the run coming as you enter the corner into turn one, which he didn't have right there. But I think the way this is working out, coming off of a turn two, you see side by side down the back stretch, no one really has an advantage getting down into three right now. Now in turn one, Kyle Busch came down the track to hold Bubba Wallace to the bottom lane. Here, Busch runs up high, gives Wallace lots of room. Well, I tell you what, with the 14 to Chase Briscoe, I've seen all I needed to see. He stayed out right there, and that's why he shot up the racetrack on those old tires. He was in trouble. It's something to keep an eye on as we move on through the night. Daniel Suarez up underneath Denny Hamlin. This is for third. No surprise to see Daniel Suarez up there. Trackhouse has been good every single race this year. One of those cars, or both of them, Clint, has, has been up front. Suarez has not had any luck. Kansas had a really good car, uh, got into the outside wall early in the race, but Trackhouse has been exceptional at all the races this year. Here's some Daniel Suarez team radio, or excuse me, Denny Hamlin team radio on the outside of Suarez, racing for third. Yeah, so these are Q scrubs. You know, guys in front have about eight green on their tires. We are good to go hard on fuel if this somehow managed to go the whole way, which, you know, probably won't. Just get after here. We'll just go ahead and get rid of this set now so we don't have to deal with it later. 
That's Denny Hamlin's radio and interim crew chief Sam McCauley, Chris Gabehart, and three crew members under suspension uh, for a wheel and tire that got away in an earlier race this year. Loving what I see out of Suarez and Bubba Wallace. Never ran better than fourth at Charlotte Motor Speedway until today. Holding a pretty wheel, both of those guys up front and in charge. Daniel Suarez restores Volkswagens as a hobby. He is put putting along in chase of the leader and gaining ground on Kyle Busch. Ain't no putt putting at this place, man. Right. I'm telling you, flying out there today, Daniel Suarez. I, I, that being said, a little bit surprising his teammate Ross Chastain struggling. Has struggled last night in practice and qualifying it again today. Yeah, that's a great point. But the one thing we've learned, uh, Clint, this year is that a small adjustment seems to make a big difference on the track. They're going to be able to use what 99 has uh, to make adjustments to their car later in the race. Rick Hendrick's shop is just up the hill from Charlotte Motor Speedway. Here are his cars, 6th, 7th, 8th, and Kyle Larson coming from the back. Larson's going to entertain you. No matter how many times they send him <laughs> to the back, he's coming back to the front. He restarted 25th. He's already up to 18th. I think last year they led all but half a dozen or so laps. The Hendrick drivers, that is. For the lead, Monterey, Mexico's Daniel Suarez restarted eighth. He's first. Wait, Kyle what? Busch is holding tough on the outside. Oh, he's loose. Into the wall. He's around. Lock it down. And it's, it's like he squirted just a little more throttle trying to hang on his outside. The thing got loose, and away it went. And, and the crowd goes wild when they see the 18 go around. Wow, the thing did that, not see that coming. The thing that I noticed with Suarez is that he wasn't running the bottom, he wasn't running the top. He was kind of in the middle, and he tried to run that same line when he got inside of Kyle Busch, and like you said, Kyle tried to squirt the throttle uh, to get to his, back to his outside. Well, if you wondered where the limit is in turn two, Kyle Busch just <laughs> found it. Here's our Goodyear aerial coverage. And he always does. You can see Suarez trying to move him up the racetrack. He got, uh, I, man, he just got close to trying to hang on his outside, and away it went. That was kind of a power move by Suarez trying to get to the lead, and, and uh, just two guys fighting for position. But in result, Suarez to the point, and, and uh, Kurt, or Kyle Busch spun the rim. All right, we're going to ride along with Kyle Busch through this as he battles Daniel Suarez for the lead, turn two. You see Suarez, looks like he's going to have him cleared getting in. Checks up, I see a little bit of fire out of the exhaust. As soon as uh, Kyle tried to get back to the throttle, the car jumped out from underneath him, got loose. Clint, I just almost wonder, was he just that little bit higher on the racetrack where we haven't seen a lot of guys running yet today? I think he's going to be a little bit upset with 99. <laughs> but let's see what 99 has to say. What did Daniel Suarez have to say about all this? Taking gas up, trying to stay on your right rear, and just lost the nose and then had to get a lot of wheel in it. He was trying to hang with you. He couldn't do it, so you're good. Focus forward, you're in the lead. Suarez, crew chief Travis Mack, and spotter Frank Kimmel II. Hey, the concern was you heard in Daniel Suarez's is, is mind. It's important for the crew chief to spotter to get that you know driver moving forward. You've got to get uh, uh, moving forward. Get your mind off of that. Shake it off. You got more restarts. Hey, Larry, were you ready for all these cautions this early in a 600 mile race? I wasn't ready, but I anticipated them. <laughs> Kyle Busch with a long stop will go a lap down, but he'll be the only car one lap down when we restart. Things are heating up here early at Charlotte Motor Speedway race fans as we've seen the 99 of Daniel Suarez take the lead early on here in this 600 mile event. Trackhouse Racing has been up to some interesting stuff lately as they announced Project 91, a new racing venture of theirs as an opportunity to give talent in the motorsports world a crack at the highest level of stock car racing. 
their first driver appearance, Formula One champion Kimi Rakinen. He'll be making an appearance for the first time in a NASCAR stock car since 2011, running a what could be a one-off race in just a few weeks at Watkins Glen. A lot of talks of what other motorsports stars we could see taking to the Cup Series here with Project 91, but rumors so far, Kimi Rakinen is the only certified driver who will be taking on that project for the three-time winning track house racing. Keep an eye on Daniel Suarez as he's currently pacing the field. Grab an ice cold Coke and buckle up. You're watching the Coca-Cola 600 on Fox. That's Austin Dillon riding 17th right now, racing to remember Navy Chief Warren Officer 3, uh, Scott Stout, who was lost at age 46, part of the Naval Special Warfare Development Group. Ready to resume after three early caution flags. Daniel Suarez in a Chevy. Denny Hamlin in a Toyota is your front row for the restart. With you, you clear the 11. I can tell you this. Oh, Clint's pretty quick study. There's fewer Toyotas up front and a lot more Hendrick cars all of a sudden. Boy, three wide in the middle of three and four. Ricky Stenhouse and others stuck in the middle, as was Eric Jones in the 43. Takes a while to sort this out. Except at the front, Suarez the leader, Bowman Hamlin for second, and Byron as the Chevrolets move to the front. Jamie, Clint, both of you have won here in the October race. How important is it to be really good and up front early? Oh, it's so important. You're going to put this track transitions. We all know that. You're going to transition 20 degrees as you fall off into the night. Trying to set your car up, and more importantly, keep up with that racetrack. Almost every single pit stop, you have to make an adjustment because this thing just keeps transitioning into the night. Well, the track is definitely going to change. The, the unknown, I think, this year is that we have this brand new car. 
the diffuser, the way that oh, car got wall, the wall. Into the wall. <laughs> it's Larson. He was driving off into the corner. The 45 moved up, took his line. Just a little bit. was hard, not like practice. Well, that's the whole side they just replaced, spending most of the night to do it. Well, and if you heard them right there, they referenced it was hard, but not as hard as practice. That kind of gives Cliff Daniels and the guys an idea what they repair yesterday for what the damage could be right now. Last year's winner who won every stage running 11th. And he was Ryan doing Larson. it on the outside, much like you see Ryan Blaney right there. And as soon as the 45 moved up in his wake, he lost the nose and shot up into the wall. William Byron now running right behind teammate Chase Elliott Vince. Well, and they like their race car. They've made very small adjustment with air pressure last time through when they got four tires, but they approached this race. Rudy Fugel, the crew chief, told me earlier today as four 100 mile races. And we're just halfway, a little more than halfway through this first 100 miler. And they like where they sit, looking for those stage points, running fifth. Eighth place right here. Kurt Busch, Ryan Blaney. Let's go back and see what happened to the five. I watched this big run he has getting off into the corner. You can see a huge run. He gets off running high. The 45 moves up. Kurt Busch just the least little bit takes the air off of him. He makes an adjustment and gets into the wall. It happened that fast. Just squeezed him a little bit, Jamie. Well, it's almost a combination. There's some bumps getting in. Larson hit those bumps, the back started bouncing, and the 45 slide up in front of him. He had passed about eight or ten cars the two laps prior to that, doing the exact same move. As we're looking, though, at Chase Elliott right here, he was doing the same move on the restart. The nine car has come to life the longer this race is playing out. It's starting to cool down a little bit. Look, Chase Elliott has been as good here the last three or four times on the oval and the roval as anybody. Well, I'm going to say it. Chase Elliott's a patient race car driver, methodical, takes his time. That five car... Probably should have had a little bit of patience. He got up through the field, not once, but twice, extremely fast. A little bit of patience would have went a long ways there. I love what you're saying right there, because when I watch Chase Elliott drive, I feel like he always gives me about 95%. And then when he needs to give a little more at the end of the race, he's able to do that. Super methodical, and it's, like you say, it's the opposite of a Kyle Larson, who you know is always at about 105%. <laughs> now, in the group right behind them, look at this two of Austin Sindrick, Xfinity champ, Whoa, he about took the nose off of Tyler Reddick's <laughs> That's the one car. you're talking about? Yeah, that one. <laughs> wow. That was close. That was extremely okay, close. We'll get it two, then two by two. You know, we talked about Cindric in the pre-race show and, and, and winning the Daytona 500, biggest race of the year, but it almost sets those expectations a little too high for a rookie coming in. Only has 20 starts in the Cup Series, Clint. Doing a great job. Ran well at the All-Star Race last weekend. Obviously having another great day today in sixth place right now. Of course, one of those starts was winning the Daytona 500 back in February, Vince. Well, and to that point, Jamie, Austin told me this afternoon that he's just starting to feel comfortable. He feels accepted within the Penske organization as a driver who hasn't had a teammate in a long time. Now he's got two of them, and he really likes what he's got. He's up a 10 spots from falling all the way back to 16th. He started six, went to 16th, now back up to six. Here at second place. Two of the Hendrick Chevys, Elliott and Bowman, Byron behind them. So three of the four, of course, Larson is the other. And uh, Kyle Larson's bout with the wall in turn three. If that had been last year's, the last generation car, that would have been sheet metal in against the tire, would have been a crush panel problem. He would have had to pit. But with this composite body, just pops right back out and you keep on trucking. 100%. What a difference. A few laps make, Jamie. I'm telling you, going into this race, I thought it was going to be a Toyota <laughs> dominance. And more Turn two. Gibbs. Got one around and in the wall. Corey LaJoy. And that is his second car of the weekend. Crashed one in practice. Ball tire again. All right, bud. Now, last. Yeah, if the first one didn't do it, the second one really felt good. Oh, uh -huh. Only four total cautions in last year's 600. We've already had four today. Hit yesterday as well really hard. And, and there's that's the worst hit you can have. That When that car spins around and you hit driver's side first, he talked about yesterday. He's like, it didn't look bad, but it, it hurt. You're going to see right here again that tire blows out, spins around, driver's side first into the wall. Almost the exact same point that that happened yesterday. Lansing blow with the left rear corner and then pancakes it with the wall. 
Uh, deja vu all over again. Here's a look at what happened to LaJoy yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, and this was the weirdest thing, Clint. It's almost like the, that car lost brakes because he, he rolls almost halfway down the back stretch, almost driving the car backwards. But so frustrating for that team. Um, we obviously know that parts are hard to get, and they've had an incredibly long weekend already. Vince. Very solid for uh, William Byron today. It's going to be four tires, no other changes. He's run steadily right there in the top five. Jamie. Tyler Reddick in the eight. You saw that one moment he had, but he said, actually, the car is pretty good here. If we can get clean air, it's going to be really good. Regan. Chase Elliott, a nice steady move to the front for him so far tonight. That car just a little bit too hard on the right rear. That means it's too loose. And the 99 of Daniel Suarez out front, happy with that race car. Said, it's a little free. I can take a small adjustment still. Long stop on the left rear for Brad Keselowski. Getting out of pit road a little late. Kyle Busch will get the free pass on this, the fourth caution flag of the day. Fox NASCAR is sponsored by Ford, built for America. And by Verizon 5G from the network more people rely on. 
64 laps complete, working the fourth caution of the day. Here are your four track facts. Ford has won 13 Coca-Cola 600s, beginning with Nelson Stacy in 1962, and most recently, uh, Brad Kozlowski in 2020. The golden boy, Fred Lorenzen, won it twice. And NBC analyst Jeff Burton is a two-time winner. Corey LaJoy out of the race after that crash. Uh, he was racing to remember Lance Corporal Riley McCollum of the Marine Corps from Bondurant, Wyoming, lost in Afghanistan as he was manning a checkpoint at the Kabul airport during the evacuation when a bomb went off, killing him and 12 other troops. His daughter was born about a month later after he was lost in Afghanistan. Here is our tracker of 600 miles of remembrance. We are a good 16% of the race complete. And Larry Mack, what percentage of our new tires have we used up? Well, Mike, you remember my Verizon race strategy? Thank the good Lord I had it in pencil and not in ink because I have definitely had to change it. We had 13 sets of tires for this race total, 12 sets of stickers and our scuffs from qualifying. These teams just essentially put their fourth set of tires on. Now, remember, one set of scuffs. Kyle Busch, I thought it was smart what Ben Bayshore did right there. He went with their scuffs because all he was trying to do is be the first car one lap down to get the free pass. Mission accomplished. But Regan Smith was telling me with all these tires coming off, just having seven to ten laps, that they're holding on to them, knowing they may have to use them later in the race. Whoa, Larry, you going to put used tires on me? I need a better strategy, buddy. Well, I can put used ones or wore out ones, which you want. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Kyle Larson has already had quite a day. He's come from the back a couple of times now, Jamie. Yes, he has. He got into the wall, so he had to come down pit road. Well, then he got a second penalty, and that was equipment interference. Another tire got away, and this was the radio afterwards. Based on the way the tires look, based on the way your fenders look right now, I, I think you're okay. We did adjust on the car just a little bit, but obviously we've got to come put the back again here. So do what you got to do. Take care of it for now. We're only 64 laps into this race. It's crazy. It feels like a marathon already, but got to make it a 400. Yeah. All right, Kyle Larson and Justin Haley had penalties on this pit stop for removing equipment from the pit box. So they restart at the tail end of the field. Everybody running, all 34 cars are on the lead lap. Here's your aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Anything can happen as long as you have the drive. Goodyear, more driven. 34 laps to go in stage one of four tonight. Four stages, 100 laps each, 600 miles. Here is how they chose. After they go past the start-finish line with one to go, every driver gets a chance to choose their lane. Yeah, it's interesting to see Chase choose the bottom. There, there really hasn't been a dominant lane at this point. We've seen guys choose the inside and the outside. The outside's won one more restart up to this point. But I think it's just about where you feel like your car is going to be the best. Do you, want, do you want to be in that resin? If you can get the initial jump on the bottom, it appears that's the best lane through turns one and two, just because of the shorter distance. We started the race with Toyotas in the first four positions. We will restart the race with five Chevrolets out front. I've been trying to get that out for three different runs here, and a caution <laughs> gets me every time. I'm glad you said that, Mike. Thank you. Green flag. Comes Chastain on the outside, already making it three wide. These guys are not paying attention, don't care about how many cautions. We're going for it. Need clean air. He's outside Joey Logano, who did not get a good roll through turns one and two. Completing 100 of 600 miles this time. Packed in field seats and suites sold out. Watching Chase Elliott and William Byron, Rick Hendrick teammates, the Daniel Suarez, Alex Bowman, Tyler Reddick. First Toyota is Hamlin in sixth. The first Ford is Logano in eighth. Third place, Daniel Suarez drawing a bead on second. Regan? 
Well, Mike lost a couple spots and those pit stops that just happened. Keep an eye on Daniel, though. The team told me earlier on today that they felt like they've had speed all year long and especially this weekend, but they found some stuff the past couple weeks that gave them speed and allowed them to also make passes. They're going to have to test that right now to get back up to the lead. Daniel Suarez had a look on Byron up in three and four, takes the high route through one and two. And there might have been a little contact between Ryan Blaney and Christopher Bell last time by. Let's see, the 12 and the 20. Bottom of your screen. Oh, yeah. It's incredible, Clint. We, we talked about the, the, the sheet metal versus the composite body that we have this year. To me, that's been a game changer for not only this series, but the Xfinity series. Last year, without a doubt, the car on the outside would have had the sheet metal on the tire and been coming down, either having another flat tire or coming down pit road. Reddick and Bowman for fourth. You know, if you watch right there, you see Tyler Reddick has his left side tires on that paint. The reason he wants to get on the paint is there's more grip there. You, if you can get your car down to that, once you get on the paint, you feel a little bit extra grip, and that's the goal of whoever's running on the bottom. There's some Tyler Reddick audio. Is NASCAR going to give everybody like 10 more sets of tires? Everybody's pretty much gone through 10 sets already. Now we're just going to keep recycling them, I think. 10 more recaps. Sounds good. Recaps <laughs> all night long. Boy, call the Towel City boys. Remember Towel City retreads? Did you ever race on those, Clint? No, I don't know what oh, year, or okay. era, or decade that was, oh, Mike. Yeah. But no, I didn't ever race on retread. Sorry, you guys are too young. Uh, I think those guys had leather helmets on as well. It might have been. I'm going to tell you that it, it's a solid concern. Everybody in this garage area needs these guys to get strung out, get these long runs underway, and I think that's what we're starting to see here. I'll tell you what, though, it's, it's been a trend this year, a lot more cautions, some of it because of tire issues, some of it because guys spinning out. We didn't see guys spin out over the past few years. When the cars would get hung out, it seemed like the side force they had on the car would allow the driver to catch it. With this car, this new generation car, when the car gets hung out, the driver goes around. Kyle Busch just bullied his way past Harrison Burton and Brad Keselowski. They were clogging up both lanes of turns three and four. And uh, Kyle almost gave Burton the boot and then dropped under Keselowski and made the pass. Uh, here's older brother Kurt in 11th with Joey Logano. Each year, Fox Sports remembers all of the servicemen and women of the United States lost in action during the last year since we last brought you the Coca-Cola 600. And we are thankful that the number is lower than it has been in many past years. And we want you to look at their names and remember their service and their sacrifice too. Right along with Chastain with his teammate Suarez right in front of him. I said it earlier, where's Chastain? Well, he has found his grip. He has found a balance on his car and just slowly but sure, uh, surely is moving to the front. Yeah, that. You know, Clint, it's, we talked about it with, with uh, Logano a, a few weeks ago, struggled at Dover, won at Darlington. And I feel like we're kind of seeing a similar trend here, but it's almost manufacturer-based. We thought Toyotas were going to be dominant, but when you look, top six cars are all Chevrolets right now. Uh, the Toyotas qualified well, but the Chevys seem to be stepping up when it comes time for the race. Sixth place here, Chastain inside of Bell. Whoa, tight, you hear him backing out of the gas. His car was tight and moving up. Moving up right in front of Ryan Blaney. Got a big shove down the front straightaway. These guys are duking it out. I love what I see for a product on this racetrack tonight. Yeah, and as we're watching those in-car cameras, I want you to watch the cars bouncing up and down. I don't think you can appreciate how rough this racetrack is. It hasn't been paid for 15 years, but the bumps into three, you watch the back of those cars porpoising up and down. 
Jamie Christopher Bell's working right back up to where he started this race. Yes, he is. He's had a great last few weeks of races, finishing sixth or better. And they unloaded great. And last night, the only practice session we had was actually right now at this moment in very relevant conditions. His crew chief told me they made one adjustment, tightened him up for the start of this race. And that's exactly where he sits right now. A little bit tight, but overall happy with the 20. Started third, running sixth. And he and Daniel Suarez had a little bit of contact side to side. Teammates at track house there side by side as uh, the one comes into play. Oh, yeah. I think he, well, Chris Bell pushed up a little bit, moved up to probably get a little bit of a side draft and just got into him. Product Whoa. of that dog leg. You can see Suarez was right up against the wall. He didn't have any more room. Just close race. And again, a product of the dog leg on the front stretch. Kind of a five pack right Ooh. here of cars with now Suarez in the midst of Wallace on the inside, Blaney on the outside. Here comes Hamlin in the 11th and Kirk Bush. Track is perfect right now, Jamie. They are moving all over the place, running on the bottom of three and four, all the way up against the wall. The resin attraction compound is doing its job. These boys are getting it on. Yeah, and you know, we talked about it. We were a little concerned since they didn't put more resin down, were there gonna be two lanes? But it seems like NASCAR is gonna a uh, really nice job of balancing these track out. It's it's so weird to see Tyler Reddick running the bottom right here, trying to get past William Byron. The one thing that stuck out to me with those two is that the paint schemes are almost the same. We'll take your box side by side with 82 laps complete. Welcome back to the 63rd Coca-Cola 600 on Fox. This is the longest green flag run of the race. 12 laps to go to the end of stage one. 
They'll wave the green and white checkered flag to end the stage, award points to the top 10. Then we'll have pit stops, line them up, and begin stage two. Hard Chase to believe. Elliott, your leader. Hard to believe we're just 12 laps. We're not even in and through the first stage. We have seen it all already. But I think it's it's par for the course this year on these mile and a half intermediate racetracks. These guys have had their hands full week in and week out. And I think that's on full display again for the Coke 600 here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Daniel Suarez has dropped to 17th, ran that car really hard, raced it up front, restarted fourth. Now in 17th position, everybody on the lead lap except E.J. McLeod and Kaz Grala. Ricky Stenhouse has moved up to the top 10 after a pit stop uh, penalty. Martin Truex has climbed up and into the top 10 now in ninth. Denny Hamlin has dropped to 12th. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has done a phenomenal job about the last month. They have really come on strong, found consistency, something that they've really struggled with over the years. I'm telling you, knocking on the door. They keep this up, they'll be in the playoffs. Vince? Well, right now, they're 25th in the standings, 95 points out, so they need good runs every single week. And as you said, three straight top tens. But they unloaded this weekend and were way off. They had to make major changes earlier this morning to get this car going. But he has driven it from the back, and he is going to get him some stage points as we are under 10 to go in this stage. Such an important race to be up front and running well at. With four stages, so many points are on the line. Need to get them all. All four stages, a lot of points. Well, I love that information that, that they just gave Smart Racing right here. You just said it. Tyler Reddick's just on the outside of the playoffs. They need they need a win, but if they can't get a win, they need to capitalize and get all the stage points. You just talked about Clint. They're trying to re, re, you know reassure Reddick. Listen, don't go for it right here. We've got a good car. Let's let's get what we can get right now. Brian Blaney had a speeding penalty earlier on pit road. Now he's up racing for seventh place with Alex Bowman. I love that about Tyler Reddick though. You know you've got a guy that is is he's capable of getting to that hundred and five percent you know much like a horse <laughs> race you pull that guy back you need him to be there at the last stretch and that's the only thing really that they've struggled with this year is to just seal the deal at the end of the race. Well he's fast every week and if you look at his last five races Clint he's had four off the pace. It's a big time with he's got it back up to speed now. That's as close as it gets. Huge save by William Byron. Got it gathered back up. Getting it back up to speed. Trying to nurse it to the end of this stage. Drops him to eighth place. Clear. And he is back on pace. Nothing like, nothing like dirt checking at 185 mile an hour. All right, Regan, how about Daniel Suarez? Mike, it's been a rough go of it this run so far. The team put scuff tires on on the last pit stop. Had a little bit of contact as well. They are trying to figure out what has happened to this race car. Take a listen. Look at it. Simple. We're looking at pitches, trying to understand what happened. We're trying to look at the diffuser flap, trying to understand. We put on scuffs, but a couple other guys did as well. We didn't make no adjustments. This is something bigger. Something happened to this car. Yeah, he is way back to 27th. Uh, Kyle Larson, three spots behind him. They put on scuff tires on the last stop, and Larson has not passed any cars since the restart. Fifth place here. Good friends Bubba Wallace and Ryan, million dollar Blaney. <laughs> you just can't sit there and just keep firing off sticker tires. I mean, we've heard yep. Larry talk about that. You know, eventually you're going to have to sacrifice a little bit. You see the five. And the 99 doing that. The Ryan Blaney Family Foundation held a great fundraiser at Top Golf in Charlotte the other night to raise money for concussion research. Uh, William Byron was there. Ryan, uh, of course, Daniel Hemrick, and others. Yeah, I saw Christian McCaffrey actually came out. Hey, and hit well done. Balls with those guys. Yeah, Ryan. That that boy. Big name at Ryan's events. Seventh place, Bowman and Truex. One name you're not going to see in the top ten at the end of this stage in three laps is Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch's worst finish in a stage in any Coca-Cola 600 is sixth until tonight. Larry? 
But Mike, it was not that long ago. He was spinning off turn two. It was a lap down. He got the free pass back on that last caution, and he's working his way back almost to the top 15 before the end of this stage. And on scuffed tires, no less. That's exactly right. More importantly, on scuffed tires, the only one that can do it. Two to go in stage one. Stenhouse eighth on the high side there. Chase Elliott, Tyler Reddick about half a second apart. Chase Elliott's about the only Hendrick Camaro that has not fallen back during this uh, green flag run. Yeah, and guys, no no shock to see Chase Elliott up front win in a stage. He scored the most stage points of any driver in the series this year. And just he is quietly, Clint, I think having a spectacular season. The battle for 10th place, Hamlin and Byron at the end of the stage. It is Hamlin that picks up the final stage point. Chase Elliott has won stages on the Charlotte Roval combination oval and road course. This is his third stage win of the year and his first on the Charlotte one and a half mile oval. Racing to remember 600 miles at Charlotte Motor Speedway. That long green flag run showed how good Chastain and Truex are tonight. Both restarted out of the top 20, but they finished the stage fourth and eighth, respectively. 
pit road is open and here comes almost everybody. Jamie. Good stage for the 23 at Bubba Wallace ended up fifth there. Said he was lacking grip overall. Just fell off two hearts. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment for tires here. Also had a vibration. You see the 20 of Christopher Bell. Car was freeing up as the sun went down. The eight of Tyler Reddick. Pretty happy with it. No adjustments for tires, Regan. Stage winner Chase Elliott. Pretty happy with his race car. Brady's hurting the right rear too much, though. Wants to continue to keep an eye on that. And the one car, Ross Chastain, balance is not good for him. Too loose and too loose on the wall, especially. Here's your Ram race off pit road. Chase Elliott out first. Christopher Bell up one. Bubba Wallace up two. And Truex picks up three. Style up old Chase Elliott. How about you, Chase Elliott? Spoiler and the boys up in the booth. You got us? Yeah, man. Man alive, that car is fast, looks good up front, slipping and sliding around. How about the racetrack and how about your car? Hey, our Napa Chevy has been, been all right. I think we could be a good bit better um, as the sun goes down here. So I'll keep working at it, man. Way early. Not even uh, not even close to halfway. So stay in the fight here, try to be there when it matters. I hear you. We'll be watching. Good luck. His teammate Alex Bowman not so lucky first year for NASCAR center lock wheels you see left side of the screen the uh, the nut laying out there as they're having trouble getting the lug nut off on the right front stage winner Hendrick Motorsports Chevrolet Chase Elliott. Saturday, two of the USFL's best square off as the New Orleans Breakers face the league-leading Birmingham Stallions at 3 Eastern on Fox. 
Then next Sunday, the Panthers battle the Stars at noon Eastern on Fox. USFL football next weekend on Fox. Getting ready for the start of stage two. Uh, long stop for Kevin Harvick, steering issues. Long stop for Alex Bowman. Here's Jamie Little with an update. Well, two stops ago, Martin Truex Jr., they were slow, so he got mired in traffic. Well, he had to drive hard, and he burned up his stuff a little bit, and this is what happens when you have to go for it. This is the left rear, cross the middle of the tire, major blistering here, Regan. Well, Jamie, problems for the 48 of Alex Bowman. Strong early on in the race, but the hat bolt on the right front tire broke on that pit stop or prior to that pit stop, so issues for them trying to get that fixed. Chase Elliott Chevy, Christopher Bell's Toyota on the front row for the restart. Elliott racing to remember Army Lieutenant Noah Harris, who died in Iraq eight days before his 24th birthday. The Ella J. Georgia native was a straight A student champion wrestler, captain of the football team, member of the student senate, attended University of Georgia, and became an infantry officer in the Army upon graduation. He was trying to rescue some Iraqi police who were pinned down a week before his 24th birthday. Here they come to the Geico restart zone. Elliott and Bell to begin stage two. The one is still on you, now off you. The one is not clear yet. That is Eddie DeHaan, Chase Elliott spotter. Rasha Sane being super aggressive right there, driving on the inside of Christopher Bell, sliding up in front of him. Clint, I love the push that he was able to give Chase Elliott down in the turn one. He got so close to him, you could actually see the cow flap starting to fly up on his car, which signifies that you're just almost to that rear bumper. Well, the truck's certainly cooling down. Everybody on fresh tires. Look at this cat. He's liking what he sees with this one of his nine car up front. But that 20 degrees cooler. It's enabling these guys to be way more aggressive. <laughs> All right. That's not Jeff Gordon. The first guy was the Hall of Famer and now a vice chair of Hendrick Motorsports. Harrison Burton got a piece of the wall coming off turn four on the outside, but continues. You say Ross Chastain being very aggressive in the one. That's the only Ross Chastain I know. Seventh place, Byron inside of Hamlin. You know, Clint, I really thought as it starts to cool down that the bottom would become more dominant, but it, it has not happened that way yet. We still see that outside lane uh, having plenty of grip. You see Rasha Chastain trying to get to the inside of Chase Elliott. Let's see if he tries to do that same slide job that he did on Christopher Bell in turns three and four. He's trying to saw the oh, car bottom trying. out. Yeah, the car bottomed out, drove it off in the corner extremely hard, slid up in front of Chase Elliott and takes the point. Ross Chastain, your new leader. Ross the boss, two wins already in this young <laughs> season. That, that man's wanting to see a watermelon smash tonight, tonight Mike. 11th place. Here he comes. Slowly but surely getting back up through the field from a spin. Literally spun out, folks. Knocking on the door, back into the top 10. He'll be back up there before you know it. Something about this kid, when it comes to big time races, and more importantly, this Coca-Cola 600 under the lights, that 18 of Kyle Busch is always there in the money. Ricky Stenhouse restarted seven, trying to hang on to a top 10 spot here as Denny Hamlin just ahead. And right behind him, uh, Chris Busher, who was involved in the first caution of the day when he spun along with Ryan Priest and Noah Gregson. Nice recovery for Busher. 
who got a free pass to get back on the lead lap. And that 18 car, Clint, he's been good top or bottom. We saw him run top, getting by a lot of guys here at the, on the restart. And now you see Busher's kind of running that preferred lane. Kyle Busher's going to try to, to make the, the pass on the bottom. He's going to slide up right there in front of Busher. But look at Tyler Reddick coming on the outside. He's been getting huge runs off of two with this outside run. And you see that momentum that he got right there. Moving to the inside of Kyle Busch. Now he's going to try and two, turn three, running the bottom. And Bush holds him off. Ross Chastain is the third driver tonight to lead the 600 for the first time. Bubba Wallace and Chastain's teammate Daniel Suarez are the other two. Fox NASCAR is sponsored by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. 120 laps, 180 miles complete in Sock Car Racing's longest night, the Coca-Cola 600. 20 different drivers have been in the top 10 so far in this race. Martin Truex, Denny Hamlin uh, doing it for the older crowd. <laughs> Look at how young that top five is. They're all under 30. Sure are. I mean, the trend there is they're all very aggressive race car drivers. Attack not only the track, the lines, where they run. Attack that throttle pedal. Young, aggressive race car drivers. Ricky Stenhouse just moved up into ninth place. Tyler Reddick to 10th. And yeah, uh, this... This stretch for, for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. started at Dover. And when I think about Stenhouse's driving style, I think about somebody that's super aggressive attacking the corner. Dover is one of those tracks that you see that at. But he has been able to continue that um, on through Kansas. Uh, struggled a little bit, I think, last week at the All-Star Race, maybe trying something different. But they have picked up right where they left off of Kansas this weekend. Let's have a look at your Toyota top performers. They started in the first four spots. Christopher Bell is third. Bubba Wallace fourth. Martin Truex. Sixth after a penalty earlier, Denny Hamlin eighth. And then the Bush brothers, Kurt in 11th and Kyle in 12th after coming from the back after spinning and bringing out the caution at lap 46. I 
Ninth I, place. I, I tell you, I don't know if it's if it's the resin that they've applied on the racetrack guys, or if it's this new car at this racetrack. But this this is some of the best racing all over the racetrack that that we have seen in years at, at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Tyler Reddick, Ryan Blaney are right up against the wall. Kyle Busch. And then we've seen some guys be able to run on the bottom as well. I'm really impressed with the type of racing that I'm seeing. I know it's a 600 mile race, Clint, but it just seems like everybody's being so aggressive even early on. Austin Cedric just moved up uh, ahead of Austin Dillon. That's 15th place. Two Daytona 500 winners. And Dillon, who got his first victory in the Cup Series right here in the Coca-Cola 600. Yeah, I so agree with you, though, Jamie. I, it brings me back to wanting to call a dirt race. You know, whoever prepped the track for tonight did a phenomenal <laughs> job because I'm telling you, this is as racy as of a mile and a half as you could possibly get top to bottom all over the racetrack. Here is Kevin Harvick. 26th and Bubba Wallace down the front straight away from fourth place slides almost to a halt and caution is out again. I'll tell you what that couldn't have worked out any better for Bubba Wallace being able to slide right into his pit stall not create any more damage to that car. We heard the tires pop just before he stopped there in the Roval chicane. down on the bottom of the racetrack. It just came around on him. Did a good job of keeping it out of the wall, staying into the throttle, running it right down. Now, I will disagree with you, Jamie. It probably could have worked out a little better, but if you're going <laughs> to do it, rolling right into your pits is a pretty good spot. Tire went down. I think it went down in a good place. Thank gosh they have the uh, 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 turf right here on the inside of the, of the racetrack. That two years ago, or what was it, three or four years ago, when that was grass, that would have ripped the whole front end off this car. So hats off to Marcus Smith and team for putting that turf in this racetrack. And he slid mostly on the asphalt. Uh, where he slid through was the chicane before the start-finish line that is used for the Roval course here in October. Well, that, he's been in and out of the pits already. Just, at, just after two replays we've shown. That's fast work. I can tell you this. I don't think I've ever seen people spin out this often at Charlotte Motor Speedway, and we don't have one totaled car yet. Clint, Everybody I, keeps saving them and driving underneath them. I, I was just thinking the same thing. We, we've praised this new car with the body, but I also like the fact of how hard it is to drive. These guys, car gets out from underneath him. Last year, you would have saved that. He would have caught that, kept going. You see the tires are going to pop right there. It's pretty amazing that the guys are ready. Watch him drive right into his pit stall. It almost fits his sponsor, Clint. It's almost just like a drive through service. <laughs> pit road closed. He'll have to start at the tail end of the line. Good news is he's got an extremely fast race car. And pit road is open. Jamie. As they all make their way down, everybody wants tires as soon as they can get them. You see the 19 there on the right-hand side, Martin Shurek Jr. He's had an eventful night, had a penalty earlier. Just saying he's way too loose, needs to adjust on that car. They'll do it with air pressure. The 12 of Ryan Blaney, pretty close there. He's kind of been on both ends of it, tight in the front end, and the 20 of Christopher Bells. And man, if we could get the lead, this car balance is really good, Regan. And Chase Elliott fired off tighter on that run. Doesn't want to be any tighter than what he was, though. And the one of Ross Chastain, been working on a loose race car all night long. They finally got that cured some. Uh, you see the flames top of your screen. That is Kyle Larson's pit. His car is still on fire, rolling down the pit road. Left rear is still on fire. And a long stop there for Bubba Wallace, who has brought out the sixth caution flag of the race.
race fans issue for the five car of Kyle Larson following that last caution. He was on pit road and the race car was on fire. It looks like they've been able to get it back out there on the track, but another unfortunate circumstance for that five team. We saw them move to the back of the field pre-race for unapproved adjustments. We saw a penalty speeding on pit road, which again moved him to the rear of the field. Now, like I said, fire under the hood of the five, but back out on the racetrack. We'll have to see if Kyle Larson can gain some ground once again. Fox NASCAR is sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Progressive offers 24-7 protection when you bundle home, auto, and motorcycle. 130 laps complete. That was the five pit stall and a little residual spill uh, outside of the fill neck for Kyle Larson. Hot time in Charlotte tonight for the five. We are 130 laps into the 400 lap Coca-Cola 600. Lap 18, Ryan Priest spun. Lap 33, Josh Balicki. Lap 46, Kyle Busch. Lap 62, Corey LaJoy into the wall. Chase Elliott won stage one over Tyler Reddick and Christopher Bell, who just had a very bad pit stop. And we're under caution for Bubba Wallace, spinning off turn number four, ready to go back to green. Closing in on 200 miles. Man, it looks so much further when you see it on that flat bar graph down at the bottom of the screen. Yeah. Long ways to go. Uh, Christopher Bell had trouble on the left rear on their pit stop, so he restarted back in 14th. Cody Ware got the free pass. Uh, he'll be back on the lead lap. He's carrying the Gary Sinise Foundation on the hood of his car. William Byron, the big head of steam, and Bell tried to come down, close the spot, go. didn't get That's there it, soon enough. Gotta be all clear. Watch the 14 here. Whoa, squeeze through the middle. And here comes Byron in the 24. I think the three slipped up in front of the 14 and luckily moved up out of the way. The 14 got that huge run. Those runs make you feel so good, Jamie, when it, but that's how you pass, right? You capitalize on somebody slipping up, making a bobble. Yeah, absolutely. And it, and it wasn't even so much that that the 24 had a big run it's that those other guys got checked up a little bit and then William Byron was able to time that out. Here's tonight's Xfinity fastest lap Chase Elliott 182.7 miles per hour. Ryan Blaney Reddick uh, Kurt Busch and Ross Chastain Larry. Well, Mike, you mentioned 8 p.m. Eastern time here on the East Coast, and now the track has cooled down substantially. It's gained a lot of grip. In fact, those fastest laps, they all just came in the last lap or two because the speed is picking up, the grip level's picking up. 
And the sun is going down. The track is cooling. More grip level. This has just not been Kyle Larson's race. You saw that fire in the pit and uh, and the fuel filler of his car coming out of the pits during this last caution, Jamie. Well, Mike, there's a lot of Kyle Larson fans out there going, what in the world has happened to the guy who won this race and dominated a year ago? Well, he got in the wall yesterday in practice, had to start in the rear. Then he had two penalties on pit road today. Then he got into the wall again. Then he had the fire. So he's still driving through. But this was his reaction moments ago on the radio. Like this has been the worst race of my life, and we're not even halfway. Oh, boy. That's a mo as much emotion as I've ever heard out of <laughs> Kyle Larson, and it's probably warranted. I mean, it's been uh, it's been a tough go so far, but uh, the key word is so far. Hang in there, hon. Yep. Your five ball ain't done yet. Well, here, here's the thing with Larson. He went 10 races last year, the all-star race, but he had a little bit of luck on his side. Things played out Things in his, his favor way. a lot. This year, it just hasn't been that way. He's had pretty fast cars. He's made mistakes. We saw him make the mistake at Kansas. Um, obviously, getting into the wall tonight. They've had some troubles on pit road. It goes in waves, and you have to enjoy it while you have it. Right now, they don't they don't have things going their way. Now, that can turn around, but right now, it's not going his way. Well, glass half full. Yeah, it's been the worst race of my life, but we're not even halfway. we got Still plenty got of time to <laughs> turn right. it around. Yeah. Look at this race for 14th place. Yeah, that's the biggest part about the glass half, you know, half full. It can get worse. It can get more empty in a hurry. I remember losing a cylinder here, Jamie, and I'd like 10 laps into this race, and that thing limped around <laughs> the whole race. Kevin Harvick currently 21st, and I believe uh, that may be about as high as he's been in the running order today. Yeah, and, and Mike, it's been a tough day. We've seen him on pit road numerous times. The report is that he doesn't have any power steering. And Clint, I cannot imagine trying to run the longest race of the year with no power steering. I'll say that we've praised this new car, the, the composite body on it, um, the, the splitter not getting ripped off. The one weakness so far, though, has been the rack, the steering mechanism. We saw three cars go to the back for adjustments earlier today uh, to start the race. It seems like the teams are, that's a, that's a finicky item, and there's a lot of work to be done on that area. Brian Blaney, Kurt Busch, this is for third. Chase Elliott out in front of Ross Chastain, Ryan Blaney, Kurt Busch, and Tyler Reddick with 141 laps complete in the Coca-Cola 600 on Fox.
rookie and Daytona winner Austin Sindrick. Big trouble. Big trouble into the wall, bringing out the seventh caution flag of the night with his Penske Ford. And he'll come into your frame from the right. There he is. Tire. Uh, That's your tire. It. He was running in ninth. We'll give you a Kyle Bush's view next. Yeah, there's there's nothing you can do if you're Austin Cindric in a position like that. If the left rear tire went down, it gets on that rub block and, and you're just along for the ride. Cindric was racing to remember Army Sergeant John Sullivan of Hickson, Tennessee. Lost in Iraq in 2006, age 22. Man. Very frustrating. Had him a hot ride tonight. Car was extremely fast all weekend long. Practice was fast, qualified good. One of the best Ford Mustangs we had in the field tonight. The AMR safety team quickly going to work. And uh, Bubba Wallace will be the beneficiary of the free pass on this seventh caution flag. So that was 18 laps into that run with a tire failure. You know, Larry, is that, uh, does that make you nervous? Well, it does, Clint, and, and I feel like they're going to have to come right here, but they have used six sets of their 13 sets. Now, again, we've heard that some have been put in scuff zone. One thing this will do, it puts you in the window to get to the end of this stage. Roughly halfway through the stage, and the 12 stays out. Jamie. Yeah, it was one of those situations we could come or we could stay out and the car's pretty good. So Blaney ended up staying out. But Tyler Reddick was talking about going back on that wedge adjustment that they made only halfway. So it helped a little bit. They just want to back it down and four tires for the eight. Regan. Chase Elliott in the nine car. Happy with that. Said the balance is the best it's been the whole race right now. Leave it alone. The one car, Ross Chastain. That car too tight in traffic this run in the 45 of Kurt Busch. Been loose all night long, but they are making gains on it. Likes the car better, just needs clean air. Two of the Hendrick cars, Chase Elliott up front, and Kyle Larson, who'd been mired back in the 20s, stayed out and uh, chose not to pit. Austin Cindric around and into the turn four retaining wall. Unfortunate into the day there for Austin Sindrick and the two team. You saw a hard hit into the wall in turn four. This was Austin Sindrick's first run in the Coca-Cola 600. In fact, all three of the rookies, this is their first shot at this crown jewel race. So why not give you a quick update on how they were running prior to this caution? Todd Gilliland running the best of the three, currently in 16th. Harrison Burton in the 21 car for Wood Brothers. He's running in 28th. Like I said, first attempt at this 600 mile endurance race for all three of those guys. So keep an eye on the rookies. They're taking on a brand new challenge here today at Charlotte.
A number of relatives of our Fox family have also served, and here are some of them through the years. And we are quite proud of their service. Coming green after the end of this caution for Austin Sendrick's crash. Uh, let me correct, it was Ryan Blaney, not Chase Elliott, who did not stop. He and Kyle Larson are on older tires, and they take the restart green. Bubba Wallace got the free pass. Penalties include Todd Gilliland too fast entering, Martin Truex's crew over the wall too soon, and Ricky Stenhouse too fast exiting. Wait. Clint, look at what a difference new tires make. You see the nine car Chase Elliott able to drive right by those guys. All right, here's the discussion from Ryan Blaney's team about do we pit or do we stay? You might get front row if one car stays out right. If everyone comes in front of it, you want to come? Or you take front row no matter what? Spin. Yes, sir. Let's stick with that. We stay for you are the only one. Yeah, we need to be more clear about that. Uh, damn it. So Well, you can understand the nervousness. Uh, obviously, you don't want to be the only car out there on old tires, but more importantly, it was his teammate that had that trouble with the left rear of the last caution. Yeah, the one, but the one thing he's got going for him, though, is he can run that high line right against the wall. And we've seen it numerous tracks when you stay on old tires. If you can run high, you can keep that momentum up. To me, for having 15, 18 lap older tires on right now, Ryan Blaney is, is able to hold on. And I liked how his crew chief sold him, look, everybody's tied on tires. We have 247 laps to go in this race. Tires are be gonna be a story from now to the end. Austin Sendrick just brought out this caution with his crash, here's Vince. Well, and Austin's been checked and released from the care center, saw the left rear go down. Any indication that that was uh, happening? No, I mean, it went down right when I turned into the corner, so I'd, I hadn't even slowed down yet. So really, really bummed. We had a really fast car, Delman Arts Ford Mustang. I had to go to the back, drove all the way back up to the top 10. I wanted to get all 600 miles today, but man, I'm, I'm probably the most pissed I've ever been not finishing a race because I wanted to do it all, and I thought we were really good today. Mike had a fast car, that's for sure. You know, so, Mike, he, he mentioned that tire cut down on the entry to the corner. We saw at Kansas and some of these other races when when you cut that tire down the straightaway, they're able to save the car, come in, get tires, you know, no 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 issues with the car. When it cuts down on the entry to the corner, though, you're Austin Cindric, you're just you're just along for the ride. Now Christopher Bell had an extended stay on pit road during that caution, Jamie. Yes, and Christopher Bell thought he had a loose wheel. He pitted, and sure, he did. It was the left rear that was loose for him. He also had some damage from contact earlier, and they were able to repair that. You see the work going on right there, Mike. Wow. Everybody okay there? Which usually the, the driver goes when the, the jack drops. I'm going to say that someone was probably on the radio a little bit panicked thinking they were going to lose a lap right there, Clint. And, and as a driver, you you start panicking inside the car and you're like, I got to go. Yeah, but it almost looked like yet. a jack handle hit the, the jack guy right in the face. All right, here's the 40 plus crowd. You got Kurt Busch right here you're looking at from Ross Chastain's bumper cam. Kurt in third and Kevin Harvick has made his way to the top 10. Well, he just got passed by Daniel Suarez. But this is definitely as far to the front as Harv has been tonight. Yeah, flip side of that, the five of Larson battling with Denny Hamlin, staying out on those old tires, trying to hold on, trying to dig out of the hole that they've been keep putting themselves in. You heard him say the worst race he's ever had. Long race to go. How about this question? Pole sitter position at the end of stage two. Well, that would be Denny Hamlin. He is eighth right now with 42 laps to go in stage two. A lot of money on the line stacking that cash this weekend. Over $40,000 at stake in Clint's game. If you downloaded the Fox Bet Super 6 app. Tells me we had a lot of fun in the infield. Had the Fox and Friends crew down there. We walked the infield to try to find some new new campers and, and get new involvement in that. Started around 25,000. You said it grew to 40,000. Pretty happy with that. Daniel Suarez has climbed back up through the field and into the top 10. 
passing Denny Hamlin for eight. Yeah, that's that's incredible recovery because he felt like something must have been broken on his car, Clint. But it's almost like maybe he had some blistered tires on that run and the handling just went away. We saw something similar, I think, with William Byron. We saw him get really loose on the exit of turn two. But Suarez has recovered. Car looks as good as it was at the beginning. It wouldn't surprise me if they were blistered. He was blistering fast. His lap times <laughs> were definitely blistering. Now you watch Ryan Blaney. He is running the high line at both ends of the racetrack. Less scrub, less tire wear that way. Well, one thing's for certain, and Jamie alluded to it earlier, it blocks that channel off. Those guys are on coming on tires. They need that line. That's a preferred line for momentum, and when he takes it, that forces them to put their tires down on the bottom, scrub more, and try to do something. He can't guard through them. Got to try to go around them. Here's uh, Chase Briscoe up four spots since the restart to sixth. Standard rear view mirror in the upper right, and then that's a video monitor uh, rear view that he has there on the lower left and inside. You can, you can put that anywhere in the in the cockpit that you want. Uh, drivers have had it over below the other one, kind of the standard area. But I noticed Kevin Harvick, his teammate, uh, and the SHR boys are running it right there on the left side. I like that, especially going down pit road. You can keep an eye on what's behind you, keep an eye on that RPM, and, and moreover, your guys in the pit road coming. I like it being on the left side as well because when you go into the corner and you go into this banking, you're looking out of the top left of that windshield. So all you have to do is move your eyes just barely up or down. You can see up ahead, and you can also see what's happening behind. Flip side of that, you got to learn how to trust it. <laughs> That's the hard thing. <laughs> yeah. so you to seeing that old you know analog uh, mirror up there you get in that digital <laughs> world yeah mirror. you got to get in that digital world you need to be in a video game world which is why all these 20 year olds are doing it uh -oh. Uh oh ryan blaney off pace back straight away slipped up pretty big in one and two yep Oh, I'd say really big car come out, out from underneath of him. Loose, heavy into the wall. Let's ride with him. Down into turn one. Yeah, I mean, that, that totally caught him off guard. That, it, you would think something's wrong, but he's, he's still running right now. But you just don't see cars get that loose, snap out from underneath you. You get in a rhythm on the track. You know your lifting points, especially running high like that. Typically, you're back in that corner. Turn way four, up. one goes around. It's the five right at the line. head end of pit road, and it's the other driver that stayed out and did not take tires. Here. The tires are up still trying to come here. Kyle Larson. Great point, Mike. There it is. There's two drivers that had uh, old tires on. Yep, tires Both of them spun within a lap. Yeah, Makes the, you back to the communication you heard of the 12, the miss of call of, of coming on a pit road. You know Ryan Blaney's going to be very frustrated. Well, and the, the big difference here between Bubba Wallace and Kyle Larson is that Bubba blew his tires out. He had to pit right there, so he didn't tear his car up. Larson's tires aren't down, so he's not going to have to go to the tail end of the long slide when they do their pit sequence right here. Larson was 10th. Wow, so fast. That car was light on its feet. Got down to the bottom, come out from underneath of him in a heartbeat. Let's ride with Kevin Harvick through this. It's not a good place to be for if you're Kevin Harvick. If that car would have backed up the slightest little bit, it'd have been the end of his night. I don't think we've been able to appreciate Ooh, that cool. in a while how hard everybody is driving every single lap in all of these races. But Blaney and Larson being on old tires, they're having to push it just that little bit extra in order to maintain with these guys that had a little fresher rubber. But Larry, let's talk about that gamble. Once you start seeing how this race is going to play out, if you're going to have one green flag run on scuff tires, wouldn't you want to do it as early as possible? You do, Mike. The last thing you want to do is be sitting there with a set of scuffs only in your pits for late in the race and look over and your neighbors. They basically have stickers. So absolutely put them on and hopefully for a short run. All right. Here's Kyle Larson audio. I just sucked. Me as a driver, I sucked. Not anybody else but me. Well, I'll tell you what, let's make a deal. We've gone from all over the place to all over the place. So at halfway, the crew's going to be reset, you're going to be reset. We'll work on the car a little bit more, and let's just go have 200 good laps. I know you're frustrated. 
I like, I like that thinking. deal, yeah. <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> And as you guys could guess, Brian Blaney in the 12 was frustrated. He said, see, I told you guys we shouldn't have stayed out there. They had to come and get those new tires. He's going to be married back for a little bit, though, Re Regan. I've watched the 18 been fighting a tight race car, even as he started to come back up through the pack. And you see him right now with that car in the jack stands. Maybe a little bit of work going on in that right front where they had the uh, fender damage earlier. Busiest 600 on pit road ever. It's been quite a day. Kyle Busch spinning back at lap 46. Little bump and bang. Bubba Wallace cuts down a tire. Ryan Blaney almost goes around, and then Kyle Larson does. More trouble plaguing the five team of Kyle Larson. I mentioned earlier that the defending champion and defending race winner is really having some unfortunate luck here today at Charlotte Motor Speedway. And just now we saw him sliding down through the front stretch grass. Fortunately, not very much damage, but definitely losing a lot of track position. What is key, though, is the frustration coming from the driver. We heard Larson say earlier on the radio, this is the worst race he has ever run and we're not even halfway through. You may have heard the broadcast booth spin that a bit and say, well, we're not even halfway through. If there was ever a race to have this many problems, it's this one, a four stage, 400 mile long race. And if there's any driver who knows how to work his way up through the field, it's Kyle Larson. Charlotte Motor Speedway beginning to gleam in the night from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. For those that push the limits of possibility, Goodyear, more driven. Chase Elliott, Ross Chastain will restart on the front row. Kurt Busch and Tyler Reddick, Briscoe and Suarez, Logano and Hamlin, Byron and Bowman, the top ten. B.J. McLeod gets the free pass on this, the eighth caution flag of the race. Yeah, it's so interesting to, to see that the, the nine shows the outside right here, Clint, because the last three times he's he's been the control car. He's been on the bottom. Yeah, guys, staying out here is probably going to work out because we had 20 drivers that stayed out. Same number of laps as the last run, 14 laps. But remember, we only had two stay out the last time. That's the reason it did not work out for Ryan Blaney or Kyle Larson. 20 drivers on the same number of laps on their tires up front. They'll race 30 laps to the end of stage two and halfway. Elliott outside Chastain. Here we go. This runs Suarez to the bottom. And 
and Elliott did not get going. Car did not turn when he asked it to down to turn one. Got in the corner, washed up. Chastain to the point that Suarez going to get him another couple. Suarez How about made track the lead. One more lap. One, two. Yeah, that. The 99 car looks so good around the bottom plate. You don't see it wiggle at all. Right on the left front, right on that painted line. He's there he goes. Done. He's going for the lead. Justin That's Marks' so team track house with Pitbull was a one-car team last year. They expanded to two cars this year with the purchase of Chip Ganassi's stock car team. And they're going to add a third car for Watkins Glen for Kimi Raikkonen to bring uh, a little European flavor to NASCAR. Tell you what, if I'm Kimi Raikkonen, I'm high, I'm excited about that opportunity. <laughs> I don't care if I'm an F1 guy or not. That's a big time opportunity. The way their cars are running, I might put my name in a hat for one at the end of the year. Yeah, you've been to Europe, right? No, not that one. Yeah, you're Eric very Jones, international, Clint. The, the 43 <laughs> was battling up the top 10 before this caution flag. Now he's got to regain some ground. Working on Kevin Harvick and Alex Bowman around Bowman. the outside. More three wide. I'm telling you, folks, this is a race. If you're just tuning in, you're tuning into a good one. I am so excited about what I'm seeing on this racetrack. Cannot tell you how good of this this track, the surface, everything is, the resin that they put down. They nailed it tonight. All Ten. over the place, top to bottom. Good racing. Ten different drivers have led this race. Fifteen lead changes so far. Well, Clint, you said it. The, the track is great, but we, we were talking under break about who, who's the best car. We don't know. It seems like every 15 laps it changes. Is it going to be Chase Elliott? Is it is it one of the track house cars? We've seen Kurt Busch up front at points. It's hard to pick a favorite or a winner right now. There is not a favorite right now, and I, I think you know it goes back to the parity in the sport, right? With this new car and the the next gen car that we've had. But I'm telling you, it's anybody's game on these mile and a half, and I think. Point proven here again tonight with the Coke 600. Fifth place. Reddick to that high line that he likes so much, and look at the launch, it gives him off turn two. And that run feels so good when you get it, doesn't uh, it, James? Like, feels like you have 50 more horsepower than the car in front of you. He wasn't able to, to, to capitalize on that right there. But when you get a big run, it gives you the option of wanting to go to the inside, or if the guy gives you the outside on the entry of the corner, you can then run high again. I want you to listen to these guys and how they're pedaling, driving these cars to the throttle around this racetrack. Now last week on a similar mile and a half, Texas Motor Speedway, we saw shifting during the All-Star race. This is a similarly sized and shaped track. Why are we not seeing it here? I, I, that's a great question, Mike, because e even at qualifying at Texas last week, the, the one difference in this track versus Texas is we had two different bankings. You had a lot more banking in turns three and four than you did one and two, so the corner is a little bit slower. But honestly, this is one of the first tracks we've been to this year. Even at Martinsville, a short track, uh, or at the L.A. Coliseum earlier this year, we heard a lot of shifting, but no talk of that so far this weekend here at Charlotte. I think you're going way too fast on the high bench <laughs> at Charlotte Motor Speedway to be talking about shifting. You see how busy these guys are trying to keep these cars underneath them? You ain't got time to shift, Jamie. Look at that run. Exactly what we're talking about. If you can make that outside work, and, and what that is, Obviously, you got to, uh, you know, get that going with your driving style, but it's also a setup. You got to ask that crew chief, get me that car tightened up to where I can keep it out of the wall and keep that momentum up. Well, and there's always, there's certain guys that just have a knack for being able to, to back up the entry and to be able to run high like that. Stenhouse is one of those guys. We see him run high a lot. Seventh place battle here, William Byron. 
right there behind Joey Logano, Vince. Well, and if the competition and the track aren't challenging enough, Byron's having some radio issues. The team can hear him fine, but he's struggling to hear crew chief and spotter. And as uh, hotly contested as the racing isn't on the track, when you're not hearing the spotter, that can be a big problem. So frustrating as a driver to not be able to communicate uh, with, with your crew chief, but more, Clint, so Clint, on those restarts, when you can't hear your spotter clear you for the lane or, or explain to you maybe the lanes that other guys are running, there's such a key communication between the spotter and the driver. Brian Blaney pulls down on the 47 and shoots the middle as we take you, Fox, side by side. Chase Elliott brings out the caution and in pretty dramatic fashion uh, looked like he had a tire going down and then when it completely was flat. No 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 watch came this around. huge run on Suarez on the inside goes into the course tries to slide up in front of him car gets loose Woo -hoo, into the wall it goes and then it may be a tire flat or toe link bent I don't know what it was come around and spun off a of four. But man, that car shot up the racetrack. We couldn't tell if it got into the wall, but obviously did damage to the right rear. Whether it cut the tire down or not, he come around and spun off a four. Now watch his hands here. Yeah, he's sawing on it pretty hard. Makes the same slide Bubba Wallace did down into the chicane area that is used for the October Roval race. And then goes around. Well, the tire's not down. Well, getting into the wall, what are the possibilities? Bent toe link in the rear, perhaps? It, it just well, didn't look like it was a bent toe link at California earlier in the year. Yeah, it just didn't look like that hard of contact to me. And and, and look, when we'll see here when they pull the tire off. But Clint, it just we've seen a lot of cars get into the wall, and and that just didn't look like that hard of contact. Another caution, Larry. Untimely. 
getting nervous yeah. about them tires? It, 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 it is very untimely. Now, all those that just pitted, they've got 16 laps on their tires. Everybody else has 30. Here's some audio from the nine. I think it's the right rear closing. Oh, gotcha. Did you get the wall? I hit the wall. So a mixed bag on pit stops. Kurt Busch leads them down pit road. Regan? Well, Mike, there was a discussion on the 45 car on whether or not to pit. Ultimately decided to pit here and go ahead and put the scuffs on. They felt like it was their best opportunity to go out and win the stage right now. B.J. McLeod gets the free pass. He'll, he will now be back on the lead lap. Well, if you made your fantasy picks for tonight's race based on last year's finish, the top three finishers here last year have all spun out producing caution flags tonight. Well, let's do a little video recap for you. Lap 18, uh, Ryan Priest spun. Lap 33, Josh Balicki. Here's Kyle Busch spinning at lap 46 to bring out a caution. Corey LaJoy hit the wall in lap 62, and Chase Elliott was our first stage winner. Bubba Wallace spun at lap 127. Austin Sindrick in the wall, lap 146. Here he is in the number two. 20 laps later, Kyle Larson spun. Ryan Blaney going by after having made a big save. Those were the two cars that did not take tires on the previous caution. And now at lap 186, again, exactly 20 laps later, Chase Elliott goes for a ride off turn four. Counting the end of stage one, that is nine caution flags so far. I can tell you, they're replacing that. Yeah, that's exactly what they're doing is replacing the toe link on that car. You heard him say it. They beefed those things up. They did make it kind of an addendum to that part, beefed it up a little bit from earlier in the year, but they still, you make pretty heavy contact, it will bend that piece still. Well, I, I like what they're doing right here, though, guys. We, we've seen a tremendous amount of cautions today. They're, they're working on this and going to go ahead and lose one lap, maybe two, but they're going to get this fixed, and then we know that that car is going to be fine once they get the tow link replaced. So let's explain what's happening here with our Ford Performance car and Larry Mack. Yeah, we've heard a lot about the tow link this, this year, and there's one on the left rear and there's one on the right rear. And because of being independent rear suspension now and not that solid rear axle, it's almost like a miniature tie rod. You see it right there. They use it to adjust the toe on the rear tires, just like they do on the front. And it seems to be the most vulnerable piece on this next gen car. And there you see it right there. That's the tow link. But you want something to bend back there. If something doesn't bend, then you're going to hurt a lot of suspension when you hit the wall. So this is definitely the weak link. That's exactly right. And that's why I like that being the weak link. I mean, we've seen it over and over again this year, that piece bending, and they replace it in a simple two-bolt system. You see that two bolts on that wishbone, get rid of it, put a new one in, and that thing is race ready again. Well, three of the four Hendrick cars have had issues today. William Byron is the only one that's issue free. All four were top five in last year's 600. Team Trackhouse, Suarez and Chastain among the five drivers apparently who did not pit. Chastain, Suarez, Briscoe, Reddick and Busher. Uh, also Cole Custer and Harrison Burton are listed as having not pitted during this caution. I'll tell you what, I knowing what we saw in the last restart with Suarez being so good on the bottom, I, I don't think that I would have given him the inside lane here. It seems like that lane has been definitely better for the 99 car. Um, we'll see here. Being on older tires, Clint, does make a little bit of a difference, though. Ten laps to go in stage two with a number of cars up front that did not stop and take tires, so they have, what, 20 laps on theirs. 20 20 more uh, than drivers who came in at 167 
Uh, the first car that just got tires is Kurt Busch in 17th place. It'll be nine to go in stage two. Out of block and on the bottom. Reddick tried oh, to get underneath Suarez and Blaney's Blaney. around again. And he this gets nailed big. by the 11. And it's the big one in turn two. I was just about to say, Look at the 12 car already back in the game from his spin earlier causing the caution. I hear you buddy. Man he was just getting back into it. Brad Keselowski's had a tough week. It's kind of a chain reaction. Reddick made a move to the inside of Suarez got blocked up choked that line out. You see Harrison Burton with left front damage. Kurt Busch getting out of his car. You saw Noah Gregson also involved and. We'll get a uh, full list for you. Because so many are involved, probably the best first look is going to be from our Goodyear aerial coverage. Watch the yellow car, Blaney. Watch the eight first, makes a move on Suarez to the bottom, hits the grass a little bit, and then gets blocked, backs up. It looked like Blaney just got on the apron a little bit, apron, Clint, and the car snapped out from underneath him. And really did block off the racetrack. Hamlin and Wallace uh, with a good bit of damage too. A lot of good cars in that one. Wallace again. And it seems like if you've had trouble, if you've been having adversity, I agree, he was on the apron right there. But I think he was watching the eight car. You know, he was reacting to those two cars stacking up in front of him, got on the apron. And Kurt actually drove up on his right front a little bit. William Byron involved also. There's Hamlin. Uh, both of the front row cars as McDowell gets turned around. Man, man, a lot of impacts yeah. right there. Yeah, he did. Beat around pretty big. That first hard hit was from Kurt Busch. Let's see Kurt's onboard camera. Nowhere to go. Right in his lap. Yeah. Let's ride with Joey Logano. Reckon up ahead, stay low, 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 get low, get low, get low, get low, turn down. That's a good feeling when you can make it through. I was just waiting to hear the crunch from Joey Logano, but barely made it through that wreck. That was his spotter, Coleman Presley, with some good advice there. And here's the audio from the 12 of Ryan Blaney. At least 12 cars involved and you said they uh, caught the grass just a bit. This is a quad oval. So after the start finish line there's that little uh, dog leg right there. Yeah, and the, the grass isn't as big of a deal with this car because the splitter is not on the ground, but the apron, that transition from the apron up into the racetrack, you see Ryan just barely clipped that. That car hooked, shot up the racetrack. He's just along for the ride, kind of like losing the left rear tire with Austin Dillon earlier, and then once the cars start piling in, you can't, you just can't get slowed down. Joey Logano, his spotter, the Coleman Presley come on, screaming low, 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 just repeatedly saying that gave him a, you know, the, the right direction to go. Oh, he's frustrated. Jamie. Jonathan Hassler is the crew chief for Ryan Blaney. He just came on the radio and said we're not going to be able to make minimum speed. Go out there, run as many pace laps as we can, bring it into the garage. His night will be over shortly. So NASCAR has a damaged vehicle policy uh, for repairs and a clock 
on which the 24 and the 9 have already expired and will head for the garage. Larry, tell us a little more about that policy and uh, how it works for cars involved in the crash. Yeah, if you're involved in a crash, as long as you don't go to the garage area, you have six minutes total, and that includes your trips down pit road to meet minimum speed. And once you exceed six minutes, that's pretty much it. You're done for the day. Now, if you get back out there and you meet minimum speed, we go back racing, the clock goes away. Obviously, Chase Elliott or William Byron did not meet that. So there are the cars involved in the crash with at least some damage. Ah, Willie B. That was two of my favorites, right, the 9 and the 24. As of late, you know, Jamie, we just talked about it. It's anybody's game. But those two cards in particular were really strong tonight, all weekend long, out of the race. Here's an easier way to explain this. Okay. 37 <laughs> cars started this race tonight. 13 of them have not been involved in an accident or a spin. Right? That's I all. mean, what a wild night of racing. And we're not even halfway. Brad Keselowski with a lot of damage from that one. This is quite possibly the wildest Coca-Cola 600 I've ever Ever yeah, I mean, it's totally different than what any of us expected heading into this. We thought we were going to see long green flag runs, but it, it's been anything but that. And the, the racing has just been incredible on the, the amount of restarts we've had. And, and Clint, we talked about it. The racetrack is just too wide. Lots of options out there for all these drivers. But drivers yesterday, including those who were on our Xfinity race telecast, the drivers only telecast, said this could be a long race with a lot of cautions. Here's Ross Chastain and company. Might be the longest race in history. Yeah, we're not even halfway. And we're <laughs> at two hours and 28 minutes. I mean, I don't think it's going to get any better. Like this. <laughs> They're hard to drive. Okay, no, no, and no. In 1960, when this oh, track was oh, here brand new, yeah, boy. Joe here Lee Johnson won the first World 600. Well, first off, the race was delayed for Memorial Day because the track wasn't finished. It literally took, Warren Zevon reference, lawyers, guns, and money to get the track <laughs> done to run the race in mid-June. And Johnson won that race in five hours and 33 minutes. We are not going to eclipse that tonight. Well, I tell you what, we're going to eclipse a lot of things, I, including my excitement level. This place was a packed house, and there hasn't been one person left yet. They're in it for the long haul. This is an awesome race, an awesome day of racing, and it's so cool to see it capped off like this. These guys are up on the wheel tonight. So guys, it was the perfect or the unperfect storm for Chase Elliott in the nine. He was still on the DVP clock from the last caution when he spun out, but because they never got up to speed, the clock didn't reset. And so they were back on pit road trying to finish up the repairs, and the clock expired. Uh, Brad Kozlowski has met uh, the same fate. Kozlowski was racing for Army Specialist Bert Hoyer, an engineer with the Army Reserve from Ellsworth, Wisconsin, lost in Iraq at age 23. Getting ready to go back to green. Kozlowski, Kurt Busch, William Byron in the garage, and Blaney trying. If he gets to minimum speeds, like Larry says, the damaged vehicle policy clock is off, and then they can make more repairs. No, but I, one thing I will say, you want to know why you hear us talking about toe link being bent, what it does? That's exactly what it does. That's a toe link bent or broke. Chastain and Suarez on the restart. And they both want the lead. Suarez got a little better restart this time, Clint. They're going to have a, a drag race down in to turn three. See who's going to time this out. Looks like Chastain's ahead a little bit, heading down into three. Suarez has been so strong on the bottom. Looks like he just missed the bottom, though, a little bit. Going to try to slide up right in front of his teammate. It's the lead. Keep him in your mirror. Three wide with uh, three to go in stage two. And look who it is, the five, back in the game. Of course. 
Well, the five teams got three laps to go, Clint, before they completely reset the pit crew and the driver. Yeah, the halfway mark. You heard Cliff <laughs> Daniels talk about. At, at this point, it, I'm telling you, it's all about attrition. Get this thing to the end of this thing. No more mistakes. Clean them up. Ride a little bit, if you will. 85, 90 percent. Let's lock some laps and see what happens. And Ryan Blaney has taken his car to the garage. Two laps to go, stage two. Fighting for the last stage point, Truex Almarola and Bell. What about Eric Jones, guys? That Third team place. has done the most with, with a small team. If they back to Fontana, the laps he was able to lead there. Here we are at Charlotte Motor Speedway in the, the 43, battling for second right there. Hey, another bubble guy, right, for the playoffs. He needs to battle back, had a little bit of trouble at Kansas, and this is exactly what he's looking for. Logging them laps and getting them stage points, getting back in that game. Yeah, and the one thing that he's got going for him right now, he's got a little bit fresher tires, about 15 lap fresher tires than what some of those other guys that he's battling with. Final lap, stage Good two. He's gotta go. Thought better of it. I like that. Hey, went for the move, wasn't quite there. Let's survive to get it another day. Let's get these stage points as many as we can. We still have two left. Daniel Suarez wins stage two, his third career stage win and his second of this season. Be partying and not at Tootsies, look at that. <laughs> Team Trackhouse 1-2 at halfway in the Coca-Cola 600. Stage two is officially complete, and we've been touching on this being an endurance race all evening long. Well, two and a half hours in, that is absolutely true. Halfway through this race, and you may remember earlier pre-race when talking to Kurt Busch, I asked him how he would describe this event, and he told me, well, there's the day, and then there's the night. So here we are just under two and a half hours into this race, halfway through, the sun is officially down and we are preparing for the nighttime to bring challenges of its own. It's a whole different animal here for these next 200 laps. Okay, things are gonna get interesting. Halfway in the Coca-Cola 600, the end of stage number two, and across the bottom of the screen, Fox Sports annually salutes those service men and women of the United States who have lost their lives in the service of our country within the past year. And you'll see that scroll across the bottom of the screen, and we are ever hopeful that the number of names gets smaller each year. So we're halfway, normally, when the field comes around, the pit road would be open and we would service the cars to get ready for stage three. Uh, this being Memorial Day weekend, during our 600 miles of remembrance, we will take a very special pause and that includes all of NASCAR's teams and pit crews and the drivers.
Daniel Suarez stage two winner Ross Chastain from Team Trackhouse Eric Jones and that Petty Motorsports uh, G Petty GMS Chevrolet in third Chase Briscoe is the highest running Ford in fourth for Stuart Haas Ricky Stenhouse fifth Joey Logano Kevin Harvick Tyler Reddick Martin Truex is the highest running Toyota in ninth and Christopher Bell got the final stage point in tenth. So pit road is still closed for pit stops as the pace car brings the field down and they will come to a halt as NASCAR joins in our 600 miles of remembrance. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand if you are able for a moment of remembrance to honor our service men and women who have sacrificed their lives so that we may enjoy our freedoms this Memorial Day weekend. To honor the fallen from our U.S. Armed Forces, please join all of us in a moment of silence. The honor and remember flag that was displayed is a national symbol of remembrance, perpetually recognizing the ultimate sacrifice of our military fallen heroes from all conflicts and all branches of service and their gold star families. If you'd like to learn more, visit honorandremember.org or text the word flag to 71777.
On this weekend of remembrance, our thoughts, our prayers are also with the community of Uvalde, Texas. To the grieving families and friends of those who were lost in this and all of these senseless acts of violence, we stand beside you with love and support and we will unite to bring about change. Halfway in the Coca-Cola uh, 600. Coming to pit stops at the end of stage two. A couple of drivers out of the race we'll hear from in a moment. William Byron was racing to remember U.S. Army Special Ops Airborne Sergeant First Class Ronald Grider of Alton, Illinois, who died in Afghanistan on his 30th birthday, survived by his wife and daughter. Brian Blaney racing to remember Marine Corporal Brad Squires of Middleburg Heights, Ohio, lost in Iraq at age 26. Kurt Busch remembering Oswego, New York's senior chief Navy petty officer Shannon Kent, a cryptologic warfare specialist lost in Syria due to a suicide bomber. And Bubba Wallace racing to remember Virginia Army National Guard Staff Sergeant Craig Cherry from Winchester, Virginia, whose vehicle struck an improvised explosive device in Afghanistan. He was 39. Vince Welch. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Remember, he had to start at the back of the pack. His car was awful yesterday in practice and qualifying, but old Brian Patty has tuned it up. Pits from the fifth position, just four tires, Jamie. Been such an impressive run for the 14 of Chase Briscoe. He said, leave it alone. I don't want anything here except a drink with some sugar in it, Regan. Eric Jones on scuff tires. One run ago, two loose. Better on this run. Going to leave it alone. The one car, Ross Chastain. That race car was tight and stayed tight the whole run. And the 99 of Daniel Suarez, they've got that car right where they want it right now. Up front, there's your Ram race off pit road. Suarez and Chastain with Briscoe gaining a spot. Tyler Reddick up two. And Austin Dillon picks up six spots on pit road. Uh, more trouble on the five. Long pit stop for him for Harrison Burton and others. A lot of miles to go. How about diving up our stage two winner? Hey, Daniel, this is Jamie Mack up in the Fox booth. You got me? Hey, amigo. How are you doing? Hey, amigo. I Clint, Clint told me not to say that, but I was I was thinking the same thing, buddy. Look, your car, really good at the beginning of this race. It looked like you faded a little bit in the middle, but you're right back there, won that stage. How do you feel about the rest of the night? I feel pretty good, man. Um, all my team have done a very, very good job all night. They brought a very fast car. Already we were making some adjustments, keeping up uh, with the track, but uh, overall, you know, very happy with the balance. Um, you know, uh, our 99 Chevy Camaro comps cup. Is it pretty good? Hopefully we can keep uh, making it a, a little bit better to stay up front and uh, keep fighting these guys. Yeah, buddy. Hey, you look great tonight. We wish you the best of luck. Enjoy the rest of the night. Thank you, Amigo. Appreciate it. Did you, you didn't tell him. I'm glad you did that interview because every time I do one, it jinxes everybody. Look, just because you pass the buck off on me when you don't want to talk to someone. Check this out. Let's have another look at this big pileup. Watch the 12 of Ryan Blaney get down just on the flat and the car just gets away and clogs up the whole bottom lane then the top lane a dozen cars involved and many of them are out of the race due to damage as a result here's a list of the cars involved that includes uh, William Byron who's with Vince Welch William Byron checked in release from the infield care center what happened tonight yeah just um you know, we, I thought we were in the catbird seat there. We were the first guy on new tires, had a good restart through one and two, or through one, um, you know, and, and got ahead of the 45. I was, we're going to, you know, cycle out really well there. So, um, and then they just started wrecking all the bottom and um, clean all cleaned up into us on the top. So just sucks. It's chaos out there. I mean, the car, you can't drive the car um, any slight bit. Um, sideways is, is wrecked and so somebody gets a little bit sideways and and we all wreck so it either takes out other people or just they spin to the infield but just um, chaos well Ryan Blaney did have to drive his car back his night is over what exactly happened with you there at the front of the field yeah I, 
We're all pretty tight there, kind of pushing, and, and I was kind of following the eight. He kind of ran through the grass, and I did too, and then he was going to be on the apron and kind of turned right last minute. Next thing I knew, I was on the apron and just turned around. So I, gosh, I hate it. It makes you feel pretty dumb doing that. I just couldn't see nothing. So I hate, I hate it tore up, you know, our car and, and a handful of others. Buddy Armour Ridge Ford Mustang was decent tonight. I felt like we were getting a little bit better, but uh, yeah, hate, hate it ends that way. Just judgment, uh, not really a judgment call, but just kind of spatially, I didn't really know where I was at and just made a mistake. Brian Blaney, one of 10 cars now out of the race, 27 running. Kaz Grala will probably get the next five or six free passes. He's the only car laps down. When you have a big melee, melee like that, take out a bunch of cars, it's somebody's fortune. Who that is, that 19 at Truex. Been very quiet so far in this Coke 600. Look for this 19 car to come alive. 11 caution flags so far, counting the stage ends. Coming to the Geico restart zone for stage three of four. Only nine of 62 600s have had more caution flags than we've had today. Joey Logano, Martin Truex. Bell slipped up a little bit on the inside. Suarez looked to his inside, closed the door. That was very close. Really backed up the inside, put him too wide. Suarez actually lifted out of the gas, gave him a gift right there, cost him a couple spots. And it puts the Toyotas back to the front behind Joey Logano. Kyle Busch, Martin Truex, Denny Hamlin. Three of the four gives Toyotas. The other one, Christopher Bell, just a couple more spots back. Oh, by the way, in case you weren't tuned in earlier, Kyle Busch, he was spun around at one time in this race. Lap 46. You can't keep these track house cars back for long. See Chastain getting around Truex and making ground up pretty quick on the 18. Teammate Suarez following suit. Cars are just so fast. You can see Suarez wrapping that bottom, carrying that speed around there. That is asking a lot out of a car. Those cars are very fast tonight. Yeah, I think I think the 99 of Suarez might be the best car on the bottom that we've seen tonight. You see he can get that those left side tires like Kyle Busch right there on the paint. We talked about how that has a little bit more grip. And we, we focused on some of those guys that are good around the top, like maybe a Redick or somebody. But Suarez has been exceptional right around the bottom of the racetrack. Ricky Stenhouse has been aggressive and his car will go anywhere he wants. Uh, even if Tyler Reddick's already there. That was pushing the envelope pretty hard. Yep. Check his three wide racing. Out. Oh, he's... Kyle Busch thought better of good it decision. that time. That was a good decision. That is exactly how he spun around with his teammate of Suarez on the inside of him earlier in the race. Lifted a little bit, learned something there. Well, and in, if you're Kyle Busch in that position, you got to look at who you're racing. We know that Ross Chastain is super aggressive, always takes. There's not, there's, there's, there's not a lot of give in Ross Chastain, so really good decision, I think, by Kyle Busch right there. There ain't a lot of give in Kyle Busch either in his <laughs> driving, but there is a lot of experience, and the experience let out right there. Meanwhile, Kyle Larson has had, uh, what would you call it, Jamie, the most bizarre uh, of races. Yes, that's an understatement, Mike. You could not script the night that has been any crazier. And what happened on the last stop, the pit crew right now, are, they're trying to cue it up, but the carrier, R.J. Barnett, was running over the wall, and the 10 of Eric Almirola jumped over the wall and actually hit a tire out of his hand, and then he fell, and another tire went into pit road. So it's been an unbelievable night for this team. And uh, on the radio, though, Cliff Daniels, he's been a cheerleader for them. In the first half, all I want you to remember is how good a TV we made. We went from the back to the front more times than I can count. We hit the wall. We spun out. We literally caught on fire. We are also <laughs> the most penalized team on pit road in the first half. All that means is that in the second half, already we're going to be starting way better than what we started the first half. We've got to go execute right now. I don't really know what the hell you're worried about, but 
I'm fine. The team's fine. Everybody down here is nodding their heads and giving a thumbs up. So let's go. Yep, I'm fine. I'm ready. <laughs> you got to love Cliff Daniel. Oh, my gosh. What a speech. Well, and, but it's so true. Yes. I mean, how can you line up that much stuff happen in one race, let alone one half of a race? Yeah, he's got his own highlight reel, and we're only halfway. Unbelievable. There, he's the such crazy a, thing such a good is there's still time. What he's saying is not wrong. And he's convinced Kyle Larson. That's the most important thing. How would you know, though? His temperament's always the same. 10-4. You'll know because you'll see him passing cars. That's no change. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's uh, use the, their pit camera, their overhead camera, and there you see what happens as Eric Almirola comes in. Oh, I lost that tire. Well, he Better lost the one that one. came to the inside was thing, but he lost both of them. Yep. It ripped the other one out of his hand, and it went out into pit road. That's the one I saw. Yeah, and that's not Eric Almirola's fault, just so we're clear. He's trying to get in his pit stall. That carrier just jumped over the wall, trying to get around the car just a little too quick. Just what Cliff Daniels said, though. Let's calm down, reset, reestablish, and get back in this game. The, the problem was he said they were going to do that at the stage break. That was after the stage break. And you're still there. Justin Mark's team track house, a second year team. Holding down positions one and two, 217 laps out of 400 complete. Welcome back to Charlotte Motor Speedway race fans. I want to highlight the 11 of Denny Hamlin who started this race on the pole and since then it's been relatively quiet for that team which typically means a good thing for the 11 here in this 400 mile long race. I should note if he were to win tonight's race it would be his first ever Coke 600 win. He has finished runner up three times in this race. I will finish this update on Denny Hamlin, but right now, caution's out on the racetrack, so things are about to get scrambled here, race fans. Let's see if we can figure out what happened. Fox NASCAR is sponsored by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. Leaders are pitting, Vince. Late call for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. to come to pit road. It's gonna be a four tire change, but no adjustments. They like the way that car is handling, Regan. Daniel Suarez just a little bit better on this run. The car was freed up just a little bit more. They decided to go ahead and pit, Jamie. The four of Kevin Harvick has had steering issues tonight. They wanted to go slow right now. Let's take a look at everything, make sure nothing is seriously damaged. He said his steering was a little off to the right. 12th caution flag, and it came out for Kevin Harvick. He and Ricky Stenhouse had been battling hard. I don't think they made contact, but Harv got up and into the wall. This was almost exactly like Kyle Busch and Daniel Suarez earlier. Got close to the 47 and car came out from underneath of him, but I don't think he was very happy. Drove up to the back of the 47. 
Here's a different look. Harvick's. Yeah, it was almost exactly like Kyle Busch earlier in the race. No contact here. Just kind of took the air off of here. Yellow's out. Yeah, hold your line. This is what I was talking about. Rolling around under caution. I think he brake checked him a little bit. Open here. This didn't make Kevin very happy. He drove up beside him. You can see. Well, I've seen I've seen some waves that I know what they mean. I'm not 100 percent sure I recognize that one. Well, here's the 47. I don't know what he's mad at. He tried to pull down on your right rear and wrecked himself. Yeah, he's just mad because he don't know what he's doing anymore. I don't I don't understand. He acted like he didn't mean to run me in the tent and Darwin clearly did. All good. Save the car. Doesn't Kevin represent Stenhouse? Well, I, I thought the same thing, but the other thing that stuck out to me there, Clint, is sure that hope he knows what he's doing. Drivers remember everything. So Stenhouse is trying to do something neither he nor his team, JTG Doherty, has done. Finished top 10 in four consecutive races. Well, he's got a car that can do it tonight, but you yep. don't want to make that man mad right there. No. Because, because he'll end your night. And you don't want to think that he doesn't know what he's doing. Because <laughs> he doesn't he does. know yeah. what he's doing. So true. <laughs> 12 caution flags just past halfway, 222 of 400 laps complete. Here's how the Coca-Cola family of drivers are faring with Joey Logano in second, Denny Hamlin, the bull sitter seventh, Austin Dillon, former winner here 15th, and Daniel Suarez now 19th. Uh, after just making a pit stop, he was the first car off pit road. Jamie? And Kevin Harvick involved there. He is going to come back in to put left side tires on. They said the front end is towed in a little bit, but they cannot fix that. So he has to deal with the steering being off a little bit, but nothing is bent or broken on the right side. Twenty three laps into stage three. There's the choose. And on the windshield of leader, re, leader Ross Chastain's car is the name of Army Reserve Staff Sergeant Joseph Ray of Asheville, North Carolina, who lost his life in Afghanistan at age 29. Outside, Joey Logano carrying the name of Army Sergeant Joel House on his Ford Mustang. From Lee, Maine, stationed at Fort Hood, Texas, 2nd Battalion, 8th Cavalry Regiment, U.S. Army Sergeant. As we race to remember on Memorial Day weekend. Seventy seven laps to go in stage three. Daniel Suarez was the leader when the caution came out. He will restart 18th. Twenty six cars on the lead lap all the way back to Kevin Harvick. Bush sent it in and then the car slid up the racetrack on him after he and Christopher Bell in the 20 had a great run down the backstretch. Still three wide mid pack. Woo, that was very close. You saw the sparks fly off the left front of the five getting underneath Eric Jones, but Jones still holding tight on the outside. It's about as close as it gets without spinning. Kyle Larson almost had a Ryan Blaney moment down there in turn one. Sure did. Got that nose down just barely. And here you on come. The apron. Here you see Suarez. Suarez is the one with only 11 laps on his tires, pitted that last time, 
finds himself back to 13th, but that drug him all the way back to 18th. He's going to have to be careful getting up through the field, utilize these fresh tires. Sixth place, pole sitter Denny Hamlin with Tyler Reddick. What about Noah Gregson right there, guys? That's a great run for, for Gregson in a college racing car. Haven't really heard much about him tonight. Was in the Xfinity Series uh, race yesterday. Had, uh, had a great run, had an engine issue, but had a really fast car. That's impressive to see him up in the top 10. I remember Jamie was talking to him pre-race and about his, just like you, all of your pre-race ridges. He had a banana. Uh, what do you have, a peanut butter and jelly? A crustable. A crustable, crustable yeah. So yesterday we were talking about how does a Cadillac ride really floaty and you know what one driver described it as that and a couple of years ago I'm reading in Dick Bergen's magazine Speedway Illustrated the new issue. Yes. Gregson ran the Xfinity race at Pocono went to Asheville North Carolina and that night drove a front wheel drive Cadillac in a several hundred lap enduro race. Why? Because the more reps and the more consistency he could get out of that car, he learned from that. So he's raced a Cadillac. He is a hard worker. He's I, I've, I've spent a little bit of time with Noah uh, away from the racetrack. He's a part of Josh Wise's program. Works out every day at 7 a.m. I think he's super disciplined. He wants to be in the Cup Series full time. And I think he is the hottest prospect we have probably in the Xfinity Series to move up to the Cup Series next year. Without a shadow of a doubt. Jamie? Spot on. That's a big compliment for him, and Noah Gregson comes from Las Vegas. He's running in the top 10 right now in just his sixth ever Cup Series start. You guys talked about him being regimented and all the things he had in pre-race. Yes, he ate an Incrustable, and he had his Gatorade. And Kevin Harvick walked up to him and said, hey, man, I know you got a problem with getting sick after a race. I saw you get sick in your last race at Kansas. You need to start drinking electrolytes. And he said, yes, sir, I will tonight. All right. Told you he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. It's so hey. right there. Hey, in preparation for this long race, don't think for a second, everybody out here, no kidding aside, you have to get on your electrolytes and start doing that, you know, days ahead. But when you're like Noah and ran the Xfinity race, like Ryan Priest that ran all three races, it takes a toll on your body. You need to pay attention to that. Keep hydrated, but keep plenty of, uh, you know, food in you as well. Yeah, and the reality of, of the hydration is that if you run the truck race on Friday night, the Xfinity race yesterday, you're going to be a little bit dehydrated today. You can't really get enough fluids into your system, knowing as hot as it's been the last few days. Larry, I questioned that call to bring Daniel Suarez in and, and put fresh tires on right there, but he is up a dozen spots. He's up to sixth since the restart. Yeah, Mike, and he only had 11 laps on those tires, and yeah. 20 drivers stayed out. I was a little unclear why Travis Mack made that move, but it's definitely paying dividends because his laps are about mirroring Ross Chastain, his teammate up there leading the race. Ross Chastain holding court in Charlotte. 32 complete in stage three. Coca-Cola and NASCAR. It's real magic when you cheer together. You're watching the Coca-Cola 600 on Fox. Speedway race fans. I was mentioning the 11 of Denny Hamlin before that last caution came out. He's still running in the top 10. I should note, this would be his first Coca-Cola 600 win. He has finished runner-up in this race three times in his career. This being a crown jewel event, that's surprising considering he is a three-time Daytona 500 champion and a three-time winner of the Darlington Southern 500. So this crown jewel event, could he take another one home and add it to his resume? We'll have to see. But all I know is that another runner-up finish, make number four, and would definitely make for an unhappy Denny Hamlin. Still a lot of laps to go 
show here in Charlotte. Enjoy. Saturday, two of the USFL's best square off as the New Orleans Breakers face the league-leading Birmingham Stallions. Three Eastern on Fox. Sunday, the Panthers battle the Stars, noon Eastern on Fox. USFL, next weekend on Fox. That would be the league leaders, the Birmingham Stallions, Mike. Gosh, Larry Mack, if they play football and they're from Alabama, you're all over them, aren't you? It's all about that state down there. It doesn't matter what league. <laughs> okay. Ross Chastain leading Joey Logano by two seconds. Chevy and Ford. The first Toyota is Kyle Busch, four seconds back. Riding along with fifth. Joey Logano. I've been watching this last couple laps. I'm talking rim riding right on the wall. Watch this, folks. That is as close as it gets. Well, and as you see, they're stacked up a little bit behind him. That tells me Logano's car isn't where he wants it to be. The closer you get to the wall, you can generate some grip, but we still have 160 laps to go in this race. That's taken a little bit of a chance when you think back to Kevin Harvick uh, or Kyle Busch earlier in the race where we saw the car step out from underneath him and get into the outside wall. Boy, the attrition here is the highest we have seen all season and quite some time. Uh, the big one took out Wallace, Blaney, Keselowski, Kurt Busch, Byron, and Elliott. Uh, Austin Sendrick in a single car hit in turn number four. Corey LaJoy in turn two. Uh, Josh Palicki and Ryan Priest. What about Chase Briscoe? Think about him winning at Phoenix, a critical race, obviously, for the championship, where the championship is held. After that win, though, it's been pretty much down. Like, Stuart Haas racing. Down, yeah. yeah, has been, has, Stuart Haas racing in general has been a little bit off, but solid run for Chase Briscoe tonight. They needed a little pick-me-up. Chase Briscoe racing to remember Army Sergeant Robbie Bowman from Granite Falls, North Carolina. Lost in Iraq at age 30 while serving his second tour as a heavy vehicle driver delivering food, water, and critical mission supplies. Jamie? And Jamie, to your point, I feel like we were talking about Chase Briscoe running at the front of the pack for the first four races of the season. He got the win, and since then in March, he's only had one top 10 finish. Well, here this weekend, they brought a similar setup to what they had earlier in the year at Las Vegas. Really happy with it, been good on restarts, haven't had to adjust a lot to it. He's been happy. Log and laps, you know, I mean, that's what it really boils down to on a track like this. And it's 600 mile race. It's all about attrition. You get through those adversity uh, moments in this race, those big wrecks. Now, all of a sudden, look at yourself. Now you're running in the top five. You got a stronghold on the ninth. Right side of Stenhouse's Camaro, pretty roughed up. You don't have to worry about that guy. Nope. Not giving 100%. Every single lap, Stenhouse is always always getting it all he has especially when that tracks right up against the wall like that you know he's comfortable running up there from racing on dirt and things like that and that's exactly where he is a little bit of brush on the right side doesn't surprise me one bit toyota started this race in the first four positions then chevrolet went to the front and uh, had the first five spots there at the end of uh, stage one now the toyota's coming back and they switch positions I uh, believe there's a bit of debris on the grill of 
Kyle Busch that he wants to get off there. Yeah, but that's not that big of a deal with this car. It's, you know, with, with, with the, the car that you were, we ran last year, when you would get some debris on the grill, you would see the temperature skyrocket. It's not as concerning here. That grill, actually, you're not allowed to put any tape on it, but it's not going to overheat the engine by having just a little bit of debris on it. One thing that I did hear, though, I think I heard a little bit of shifting right there. We had talked about earlier in the race not hearing anybody shift, but we did hear Kyle Busch shift right there. Now, this is all for 10th place right here. Gregson, Harvick, Larson. All three have been involved in at least one incident tonight, and Kyle Larson has had several all to himself. Well, well if you want to add one on to that, road. here comes Chris Buescher, and yep. he's been in a wreck. All right. four of those cars have been in a wreck at one point or another in tonight's race. Yeah, not surprised. We talked about Noah Gregson earlier, guys. You think about it at Homestead. He has been incredible at running right against the wall. He's comfortable running up against there, so not shocked at all to see Noah run, running up high. Looked like he pulled down low on the exit there because Harvard had, had moved up into his line just trying to get some clean air on the nose of that 16 car. So cool to see all these guys ride up against the wall like this. Honestly, it's been since, I, from what I can remember, the night I won here in 12, I remember it being just weird. We ran right up against the wall. It's where I ran all night long. Got into victory lane that night in October, and, and it was just that way. Literally the last time I remember the line being right up against the wall. Fourth place there. Uh, we're going to take a break here because after the break, dare we say it? Don't tease us, Mike. Green flag pit no. stops. No way. Dare, dare. Ah. <laughs> Charlotte Motor Speedway race fans. That 47 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. currently running seventh. He's on a hot streak right now. Three consecutive top 10 finishes. And here at Charlotte Motor Speedway, he knows what it takes to be successful. He's done so in this race. And as far as his car is running, well, during that last pit stop, absolutely no complaints. And on top of the box, crew chief Brian Patty, nothing but words of affirmation for his driver. So keep an eye on Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He's looking to improve on his stellar season here tonight. Noah Gregson was running 12. Jamie Mack, you had to talk about him, huh? Yeah, I know. Clint, Clint, Clint Shot told me not to do it. Looks like he's been in the wall of the right sides. There it is. See him coming off the wall, spinning down to the bottom. And that'll put us under caution for the 13th time. Gregson racing to remember Army Private First Class Samantha Huff, 
from Tucson, Arizona, military policewoman who fell in Iraq at the age of just 18. Now new leader Daniel Suarez took over the lead uh, from Ross Chastain prior to the caution. They were in good shape. Here's that lead change on his teammate, Ross Chastain. Just in the nick of time. Well, yeah, and Suarez had run him down from, from almost three seconds back. So I, I, I know that 99 had a little bit fresher tires, but he seems to have the best car at this point in the race. Pit Road's a busy place. Jamie. And Chase Briscoe in the 14 pits from the third position. Just starting to lose the rear a little bit, barely lose. So no adjustments here, just four tires and fuel, Regan. Ross Chastain starts the runs off too tight right now, but by the end of a long run, it starts sliding the rear tires. He needs a slight adjustment for the end of the runs. The 99 of Daniel Suarez still fighting rear grip just a little bit with that car as you see a hang up on the right front and a slow stop there. And the 22 of Joey Logano too loose all the way through the corner right now. Boy, Logano a little slow getting away there, got blocked in. So did, uh, so did Kevin Harvick. Suarez had a bad stop. So Reddick up six, Busher up six, Hamlin up three, Larson up five, and Austin Dillon and Ty Dillon each gain nine positions on pit road. Kyle Busch still sitting in the pit lane. Ooh. Logano hanging out. Where's uh, the 99 going to go? Race fans, look who I found down here on pit road. It's JD Motorsports driver Ryan Vargas. Ryan, you raced here last night in the Xfinity Series. How do you describe this place? This place is one of the most racy mile and a half you'll ever be at. It is so bumpy in three and four, and then one and two, you can run all the way from the bottom to the fence. So you could see it tonight. Uh, Tyler Reddick earlier today was putting it right against the wall, and a lot of these guys have been doing that same thing. So a lot of comers and goers, it's been very interesting. Very interesting indeed, and we've seen a lot of on-track activity. Cautions have been uh, plaguing this race so far. Are you surprised at all by what you've seen in tonight's run? Not really. Uh, the way these next-gen cars drive, they're so on edge. You know, the sidewalls obviously being so much smaller. A lot of these guys, they're on that ragged edge of control. So very interesting to see how this race finishes out. Another major factor in tonight, we've seen a lot of cars sliding their way through the infield grass, or I should say infield turf, which has actually made a big difference in um, minimizing the uh, damage done to these race cars. You had a bit of a similar slide yesterday. Kind of put me in the driver's seat. What's going on there? Yeah, I mean, what, what Charlotte Motor Speedway did here by adding this, you know, artificial turf has kind of given drivers an exit plan. You know, when there is a wreck on the front stretch, when you go into the grass or the turf, you don't risk damaging the car nearly as bad. Yesterday, there was a big wreck off of four. I took a detour through the turf and minimized the damage that we could have had, or else I would have just plowed into the crash. So major advancement here by the Speedway, and uh, I hope to see it more. Ryan, it's so good running into you down here. Hey, enjoy being a race fan. We still got a lot of laps to go. Yeah, a long one to go, so thank you. Absolutely. That's Ryan Vargas down here in the pits. Looks like a few cars are getting ready to line back up, maybe bring it in. We're going to have to see how things shake down here in the latter half of this race. All of us at Fox take a great pride in our family members of the U.S. military through the years, and we salute them for their service. 
feel strange to be doing this Memorial Day race without Jack Simmons, Senior VP of Production Operations at Fox. I last saw him at the uh, LA Coliseum uh, back in February for the clash. And Jack passed away this spring. He had strong ties to the military as an Army Reserve Ambassador for the 63 Readiness Division and was always a big part of this Memorial Day telecast and his love and support of the troops will always be a lasting memory of Jack Simmons. 42 to go when they get to the stripe in stage three of four in Stock Car Racing's longest night. Only five Coke 600s have had more caution flags than this one. Here we go with Chastain and Briscoe up front. Kyle Larson on the outside, almost scraping the wall, <laughs> taking names and passing cars. Well, the first time he hadn't had a penalty on pit road in quite a while. Well, that's true. Actually holding his own this time. Joey Speaking of holding his own, look at Chase Briscoe. Yep. Joey Logano in that yellow car was doing the same thing up on the outside last time by. And again, he rockets off turn two yeah, and gains a spot. Yeah, Logano's generating huge momentum off the top. New tires, old tires. It seems like his car likes to be around the top. He's got that little bit of run, though, on the inside of Denny Hamlin in turns three and four. Logano's car looks like it has great short run speed. Woo. For the lead, Chase Briscoe to the bottom. Going to try to slide up in front of him. Gets clear, get, uh-oh. Who when that camera moves sideways, I thought he was loose, Jamie. Oh. Yeah, and it, you know, it's crazy, Clint, to watch Chastain, Briscoe, and Reddit go at it because you think about those green-white checkers we saw at Phoenix, the exact same three Same cars. thing, Here slide job again. Mile track, mile and a half, doesn't matter. Okay, same player. Here comes that Reddit to the inside of Briscoe. This is, Three young, aggressive race car drivers going at it. The Coca-Cola 600. Yeah, you think about it, the beginning of the year, Clint, none of these guys had a win. Uh, Chastain's been able to get two wins. Briscoe obviously went to Phoenix. And we've said for weeks that we think Reddick would be the next guy to get the first win in the Cup Series. It's so much fun to watch all three of these guys. <laughs> Had it won if it wasn't yeah, for right. the name of yeah. said right before that. <laughs> Man, it, it, that was a tough one to swallow. But hey, how about Chris Buescher bouncing back in the top five and then Larson? <laughs> this is, it's just insane to really think back of all the things that have happened in that first stage. And all of these guys are back in it and battling. Vince? Shouldn't be totally surprised if Busher's a good run here in the 600. Three straight top tens in this race. It seems to suit him for one reason or another. You did mention that spin back on lap 10, but they've had a good car. They just really haven't had the track position to show it. And how about that pit crew? Got them six spots last time with a stop under 10 seconds. <laughs> this is Kyle Larson's uh, seismic activity today. Look at that graph. That's what a heartbeat. It's been a it's been up and down 90 to nothing with that guy. Well, and I think you got to give a lot of credit to his crew chief, Cliff Daniels, and the, the therapy session that they had about 100 laps ago. Cliff telling him it's all going to be OK. Look, we got all the bad luck out of the way early on. We're going to have a solid second half of the race. And and so far, it's it's Whoa, happened. that was Suarez didn't like that. Something happened with 47. He didn't like oh. took a shot at him and missed. That allowed Cole Custer to capitalize on the inside. He slides up. Right up, uh, was close to Suarez there, and Austin Dillon, another oh. former 600 winner looking on. Cole Custer, hear that name. Hey, something tells me when that 14 come alive, you know that everybody in that stable is going, hey, what kind of air pressure they got? What are they doing? Where are they at on the wedge? Making those adjustments. Well, and Custer was one of the cars that did the tire test here. And, and from what I gathered at that tire test, they said when the sun went down that the 41 car happened to be one of the best cars. So maybe they knew the way the track was going to go tonight, and it's playing out to their favor. Here, another shift. 
Starting to hear more cars shifting in that end car. Yeah, and, and Clint, it almost makes me think that maybe the engine builders and team said, look, let's not do that early in the race. It's a 600-mile 600, 600 race. Let's save it a little bit. I saw the five car look like shift a little bit earlier when he was passing Chris Buescher. 266 laps, 12 different leaders, 23 lead changes. We still have 24 cars on the lead lap, 13 caution flags. Chase Elliott, Daniel Suarez have uh, won the first two of four stages. And out of the race, 10 cars already. And that's a very high attrition for this NASCAR season with the new seventh generation race car. Yeah, think about just one year ago, Kyle Larson led 327 laps of this race. And we've seen Kyle Busch, Martin Truex Jr. dominate this race. Tonight's not been the case. Ross Chastain's obviously been really good. We've seen Daniel Suarez good. We've seen numerous guys be able to lead. Chase Elliott, Kyle Busch, Joey Logano. It doesn't seem like anybody's really been a favorite, Clint. It's amazing to me, this car at this track, the way they prep the track, Incredible racing. Not just this racetrack. I'm going to take it to the next-gen car. It's been this way on these mile-and-a-half tracks. This was the vision. This is the need, right? We needed these tracks to deliver better, and they certainly have all year long. I was so excited about coming here to Charlotte Motor Speedway for the 600, and these fans were, too. Look at this crowd. It's still action-packed. These seats are full, and they're in for a good show. They've already seen a good show, and I can't wait to see the second half. As they come around, it'll be 30 laps to go in stage three. Remember, this is the only NASCAR Cup race that has four stages. So how about a Memorial Day weekend? NASCAR on Fox, crank it up. got up and into the wall there at turn three. There were about six cars in a all but locked together going into turn three there. Stenhouse ahead of Bell here. Well, and Bell expected for Stenhouse to stay high as they exited there, but he started turning down, driving off a little straighter off the corner. And look at all these cars packed together right here. He's and did he problem. get a little bump from El Marola there? Uh, he's got a problem. He's yeah. obviously got into the wall with the 47. I don't know. I think the, the 47 had to have bobbled right there. As fast as they came on to him, I think the 47 bobbled. He tried to go underneath of him and just got in the back of him. No caution flag for that Christopher Bell. Was definitely a hornet's nest though. For two yep. or three laps, those cars were on top of one another, two and three wide. Something had to give. So Chastain the leader, Briscoe 1.3 back, and Kyle Larson has turned it up. And he's closing on Briscoe for second. I'm gonna admit it. I, I, I was thinking that was the fastest car on the track. He hit the wall and thinking, eh, maybe not so much. Time and time again on pit road trouble, penalty after penalty. Just thinking, man, it's just not their night. Lo and behold, here he is. And less than a second behind Larson is Tyler Reddick. Where that five car is running in three and four, he's been shifting down there every lap. Just have a I don't trust the car enough to do that. Uh huh. So it sounds like he's a little scared when he does the downshift. It might upset the balance of the car. Maybe he's already loose on entry. Yeah. A little bit nervous about downshifting. Car's light on its feet. 
And a downshift will promote that, right? You, you downshift that thing and rah, it'll go up on the revs, could come out from underneath of you in a heartbeat. Definitely promote a loose. If it's already loose, I agree with Tyler Reddick. Better to be safe than sorry, especially at this point in the game. One thing I like as I watch him driving, you watch, he's relaxing his, his hands on the steering wheel, not not death grip in the wheel. Um, looks like he's looks like he's hot to me, Jamie. Might have a little bit of sweat in his eye right now. Oh, that was a downshift into See, four. He's, he's trying yeah, it out though. They, they told out. him that he ran a few laps, got comfortable. Yep. Twelfth place. <laughs> now this this is the residual. Uh, of that Ooh. battle that included Christopher Bell a little while ago. These guys still going at it. Well, there'll be some tire residue on the side of it with the residual you were talking about. They just got together. Twenty three cars are on the lead lap and in Clint's game. We have. Whoa, just one player still alive to win forty thousand dollars of Clint's money. Come on. The whole world's rooting for you. I don't know why I'm rooting for you to come get all my money, but I'm rooting for you too. Forty thousand dollars on the line. One Fox Bet Super Six player is still alive, and if he scores, it's going to be a party in Myrtle Beach tonight. Hey, I'm a huge fan of it, and I'm a huge fan of that fan. That being said, there's no way they knew what they were talking about if they picked <laughs> what was going to happen in the first two stages of this race. No way. No chance. Teammates, Almarola and Harvick. Well, and this could get interesting, Mike, because Kevin Harvick is now catching the 47 car, who they had a little confrontation earlier. So it'd be interesting to see if Kevin Harvick has forgotten about what happened earlier or if he remembers. Wait a minute. You used Kevin Harvick and forget <laughs> in the same sentence. I don't think so. 120 laps to go in Charlotte in the Coca Cola 600. We're going to take you, Fox, side by side.
600 miles. That's about how far it is to drive from Charlotte to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And we're two thirds of the way there tonight in our 600 miles of remembrance. 14 laps to go in stage three of four stages. And here is Al Marola and Harvick and Ricky Stenhouse and Alex Bowman wants to play. This has been a dogfight between these three drivers. Harvick finally got to the outside of Al Marola. He'd been on, trapped on the bottom for the last 10, 12 laps. And here comes Bowman. Here comes Bowman. Now this is outside the top 10 back at 14th place. We know Harvick is not very happy with the 47. Well, and the 47 car has been really good all night long, but he has gotten off a little bit on this run. Seems like he's a little bit frustrated wanting to maintain that. Normally have 13 laps left till we get to the end of the stage. But personally, Clint, I would not mess with Kevin Harvick tonight. Nah. Go on. Kevin's not going to mess with him either. He's going to go on and make a pass. Yeah, it looks like Stenhouse actually rolled out of the throttle a little bit. Let him go. I'm going to say that was a good decision on his Probably part. Probably wise. Yep. I agree. Kevin's coming alive. Those SHR cars looking strong. Sixth place, pole sitter Denny Hamlin. Here comes Joey Logano. He wants part of this. A little love tap. Push her to the bottom. And Cole Custer in the mix. Now, these are top ten spots. This is sixth place on back. Joey really has found his groove right up against that wall. That was that big run down the back straightaway. You can see him riding the lip right here. Now watch early to the throttle. You hear him really get to the gas early. Stay in with it. Watch this run. Uh, Push is going to slip up in front of him. Might move to the inside. I like it. Ten to go in stage three when they get to the line. While we watch this battle for sixth, here's Jamie Little on the third place car. Mike, the fact that Kyle Larson is running third right now is simply unbelievable after the night that he has had. Now, he just came on the radio a little bit ago and asked where the others around him are shifting. And Cliff Daniels told him, but he said, don't take any unnecessary risks at this point. Regan? Well, Jamie Daniel Suarez has had a battle all night long from the back to the front a couple of different times. Currently working his way back up to fifth place right now. But his crew chief, Travis Mack, also this week going through quite a bit. He is on the box playing through some pain tonight. He spent most of the week in the hospital with appendicitis. They did not fix that yet. So Travis Mack in a lot of pain on the pit box right now. And Kyle Busch on pit road with just nine laps to go in the stage. Larry, what kind of contrarian strategy could this be? It, it, he's got to have a problem, Mike. Everybody could make it to the end, so this has to be he felt something in that 18 car. Regan. Well, Mike, a couple laps ago, I believe the 18 may have got the wall just a little bit. He said the right rear felt like the toe was out on the right rear. It was scary to drive after that. He had an incident back at lap 46 when he spun and brought out the race's second caution. Oh. You get out back. Lock it down. Lock it down. The spun didn't get the Still caution, green. but did pit. His right side tires were gray. He had definitely been in the wall when he pitted. And Kevin Harvick misses another one. Missed an opportunity to caution there. Just didn't get it. We're in the longest green flag run of the night, 35 laps, and we have not yet had a round of scheduled green flag pit stops, but still one 100 lap stage to go after this one concludes in six laps. Well, Mike, the last time you said that, the caution came out about 15 seconds later, so I hope you have not jinxed us. No, that was the last time you talked about Noah Gregson, the <laughs> caution right. came up after I said that. Six to do. This is when the wheels start falling off again. That last <laughs> stage. I love the view, Clint, here from this visor cam, though. You can see how rough the track is. And this is so real. It's exactly what you see from the driver's seat. The thing I love is the different lines. You see how Chastain moves up, rolls into the corner high, diamond yep. sound off of it, gets that huge momentum. Six and seventh, Logano and Busher. 
Yeah, it's all good, Jamie. You know, you know how this works. We don't jinx anybody. Cars turn <laughs> left, we talk about them. Cars turn right, we show replays and talk about them more. <laughs> That's just exactly right in my point. Look at Chris Bush. I'm going to talk about him because he deserves <laughs> to be talked about. This kid over delivers in that race car, doing a great job again tonight. Already been backwards once, has his thing in the money. Great job, Chris Busher. I'll tell you, his car looked a little tight in the middle, but you saw it nervous on entry. No also a little bit of wiggle uh, on exit. He has about a two second lead on Chase Briscoe. So you think he's probably not pushing the limit right now, Clint, knowing that we only have three laps up in the stage, but that car does kind of look like it's on edge. Kyle Larson has caught Chase Briscoe, second place here. Stage points, three laps from now to the top 10 where Denny Hamlin sits in 10th place. Justin Haley just came by with the engine sounding sour on his number 31. He is still on the lead lap, however. I three. The thing I've noticed with Chase Briscoe when we ride with him, how he holds his head. Almost looks like he looks out of the right side of his car at the right front, almost all the way around the track. That's something that's different than, than anybody I've ever seen drive. Everybody's a little bit different in their driving style, but certainly something I've noticed with Chase. Ross Chastain, eighth generation watermelon farmer from Alva, Florida. His dad and his brother taking care of things while he races for Team Trackhouse. Looking for his third career stage win, all coming this season. So impressive. They've been solid week in and week out to the point you're thinking, man, when is it going to taper off? When's it going to fall off? I'm a believer. They're in it for the long haul. Ross Chastain over Chase Briscoe, Kyle Larson, Tyler Reddick, and Daniel Suarez for stage three. Race fans, Jesse Punch here with a report from Pitt Road. You'll see the 31 team of Justin Haley lining up on the wall behind me. He's currently falling back in positions and reporting a motor issue. I'll keep you updated as they bring that Chevrolet in, take a look at it, and see how they're going to continue throughout the remainder of this race. I also want to note when looking at the running order right now, it was just 100 laps ago that the five of Kyle Larson was complaining this was the worst race he's ever run. Now he's back in the top three and actively competing for a second place and, well, for a win here today at Charlotte.
Fox NASCAR is sponsored by Toyota. Let's go places. Stage three in the books, there's Kyle Busch. Pit crews getting ready to go to work. Mike, that's way harder than it looks. Yeah. A way lot. harder than it looks to get a drink from with that straw up, up underneath your helmet. I, I usually ended up with, I usually ended up more than it on games, me. Jamie. Why is it always about hydration? How about driving these things? These cars have been a handful all night long. Kyle Busch, he literally well, spun on the pit road. I mean, obviously that was the, hard. I was talking about that because he was taking a drink. All right, pit road's open, Jamie. Chase Briscoe in the number 14 officially led one lap. That's his first lap ever led at Charlotte Motor Speedway. A little bit loose in three and four. He almost spun out, but overall he likes the balance, so doesn't want to take a big swing here. The aid of Tyler Reddick coming into his box. Team did a great job, gained him six spots on the last stop. Needs to turn a little bit better. And the little car that could, the five of Kyle Larson, they keep ticking. No adjustments here. Regan? Ross Chastain's race car is perfectly neutral early on in the runs. At the end of the runs, though, it goes a little bit free with the back of the race car and the 99 of Daniel Suarez. His car is good. He spent the time pumping up his pit crew for a good stop. About Reddick. Plus three for Tyler Reddick. Good stop. Everybody four tires. And let's hear from our stage three winner. Hey, Ross Chastain, it's Jamie Mack up in the Fox booth. You got me? Try the other channel right, we'll here. Try it again. Ross Chastain, it's Jamie Mack up in the Fox Sports booth. You got me? Yeah, buddy. Hey, man, what a night you are having. Led 122 laps so far. You've been in a great position. Listen, Clint made me talk to you because he said he jinxed everyone, and he wants you to have a good night. But tell us about your car. How do you feel about the rest of the evening? Yeah, just super impressed with track house and deep Chevy. Obviously, a bunch of us up here with the bow ties and, and Daniel and I, uh, going at it sometimes a little frustratingly but um, yeah super just super proud problem, proud to man. drive this one car yeah we've talked about track house all night you and you and Suarez have had an incredible night good luck the rest of the night all right buddy thanks our man is focused Chastain looking for his third victory of the season he's our stage three winner the final act of the coca-cola 600 next the 31 of Justin Haley coming to pit road. I was just reporting during the last break that he was reporting he was having motor issues. It looks like the team is hard at work. Changing tires looks like they're having a bit of an issue with the back left tire. No, they've got things going now and they're hoping to get this 31 off of pit road. Nope. Continued trouble looking under the hood here for the 31 of Justin Haley. Definitely confirming motor issues for that Chevrolet.
Fox NASCAR is sponsored by Bank of America. What would you like the power to do? Well, a couple of incidents on pit road. First is the penalty for Alex Bowman uh, removing equipment out of the pit box here. That's going to be a roll away tire. And uh, the right front tire changer on Joey Logano's car having an issue. You see him get in position. Here comes Denny Hamlin, catches the air hose, and uh, may have clipped his foot. Yeah, that right foot was hanging out when he got in there. But if it was, man, what a what a contender. Got right back in the game, got that air wrench right, hits it right there, gets the lug nut on. If that, Yeah, you can see wow. hobbling on it. I think he got run over. If he was hurt, he wasn't showing it, Regan. Well, Mike, that's exactly correct. He did get hit on that foot when Denny Hamlin came into the pit stall. That was Tanner Andrews, right front tire changer for Joey Logano. They're checking in on him right now to see if he's going to keep going tonight or not. Thanks, Regan. It was so work. impressive to get back in the game like that. Man, that's got run, literally got run over by a race car, got right back in the game, got that tire changed, hobbled off. And they had insult to injury wearing a suit with somebody else's name on it. <laughs> well, I guess whoever's name that was is glad that he wasn't the one that got run over, I guess. How about this race? Kind of like the All-Star race where a number of the early favorites are falling out, and here we are going into the last stage, whole new ball game. It's anybody's game, but if I've got a favorite, I'm telling you, those track house boys, extremely fast. Chastain's leading all the laps. Suarez, he's spending some more time on pit road, but I think his hot rod's just as fast. Yeah, we got Reddick up front. Kyle Larson's yeah. made a really good recovery today, but what a difference a year makes what we saw last year in this race to what we've seen today. Kyle Larson called it the worst race of his life. Well, that was the first half. Second half has pretty well gone his way after everything went wrong in the first half uh, for team number five that dominated this race and won handily last year. Stage four. Reddick and Chastain on point. Reddick looking for his first win. Needs his clean air and he has it. Right off the bumper of Cole Custer. Haven't talked about him much, but his teammate Briscoe, he's been up there in that clean air, running fast lap times. I think they got that same setup in there. Liked what he feels. Richard Childress racing out front. Had success here with Dale Earnhardt. And Austin Dillon won his first race in uh, the number three right here in the 600. Look at that crossover, Jamie. Yeah, Larson ran really high through three and four, generated a big run on exit, able to clear Cole Custer down into turn one. I think I like about Larson's car and I guess you just learned that from passing so many cars is how he can ride that bottom yeah. you know and that's something that a lot of cars can't do to be able to pass you got to do something everybody else can't and him making some hay down on the bottom of the racetrack especially as this track starts to wear out the tracks upon a traction compound on the outside and the fact that it's cooled off I, I like that his car's fast Clint. that's my favorite part of or it's it. just fast yeah. this group was three wide for a whole lap and now they go right back at it again. You see Joey Logano on the bottom all of a sudden. We saw him up top most of the race. It's Kyle Larson's trying to work over Ross Chastain. If I'm Ross Chastain, though, I make Larson pass me on the bottom. I don't give the five car the outside because Whoa. we know how good he is on the top. Kyle yeah. tried to pass or move back down to the bottom. They do exactly what you were just saying. Briscoe was there, elected to get out of the gas. Very lucky. Yeah, Briscoe was coming hard on the bottom there. Uh, Larson and Chastain made some contact last time by. Here's a look at it. This is off turn two. Ooh. Quite a bit of contact. I think the five was thinking that that the one was going to be up a little bit higher and probably should have. Got some smoke off the right rear. Teammates getting after it. You know, the, the, the one thing that we've, we've learned from this new car, contact's not a big deal. Like, you have light contact like that, the body pops right back out. We don't see those tire rubs. 
any issue with the five or the one car right there. Briscoe tries the bottom again. Suarez in the middle. There's your Stuart Haas running order. Cole Custer in fourth, looking for his first top 10 finish in over a year. Briscoe sixth, Harvick 10th, Almirola 12th. Well, you know, we talked about the track kind of going through a transition. The SHR cars at the beginning of this race were not that fast, but as it's cooled down, as that track tip has cooled down, it seems like they have migrated more towards the front and it's played into their favor. You see Suarez really holding him down right there. You gotta be careful doing that. That car gets loose underneath of you and wipes you both out. You can be frustrated with him all you want, but you put him in a pretty vulnerable spot. Jamie, to your point, there's four Fords in the top 10 right now, and I believe that's the most that we have had in tonight's race at one time. Yeah, that's a great point, Mike. We, we thought after qualifying last night, this was going to be a Toyota race. They won at Kansas a few weeks ago and then qualified so well here, but yeah, it's nice to see all those Fords up front. Jamie Little on our leader. On the pre-race show, I called this guy right here, Mr. Excitement. Now he leads for the first time tonight. And I talked to his crew chief, Randall Burnett. He said, usually this guy drives at 110%. He gives it his all. Tonight, we want about 105%. Roll with the punches. Well, guys, they haven't had many punches tonight. This car has been good. They've made very minimal changes. And how about the pit crew? If my math is right, the last two pit stops combined gained him nine positions and the lead. Wow. Well, if my math is right, car number eight has already won one big race today. Tyler Reddick out in front with 84 laps to go. by the pit box of the A team of Tyler Reddick. That Chevrolet currently in front of the field. Tyler Reddick always the bridesmaid in just his third full-time season in the NASCAR Cup Series. He has finished second five times. The frustration is there. I've spoken to Tyler after almost every second place finish and he is so ready for that first win. It was just a few weeks ago he finished second at Darlington and here we have less than 75 laps to go to see if he can pull off win number one here tonight. Tyler Reddick, Ross Chastain, 80 laps to go, battling for the lead in Charlotte, North Carolina, in the Coca-Cola 600 on Fox. It is that close. What a great time to look at tonight's Credit One Bank ones to watch. Well, up first, and listen to this, folks. Three penalties on pit road, a spin and a fire, and my man is still in it. The five of Kyle Larson, it's got to happen. If there's adversity, if that has anything to do with it, he's going all the way. Clint, my man, Ross Chastain, his best finish at Charlotte prior to night was 21st. Didn't even have a top 20 finish. He has led 122 laps, back up there battling for the lead. But remember, for every driver, there's at least one more pit stop. 
But Larry, I'm going to go with the guy leading this race, Tyler Reddick. The Coke 600 has produced seven winners to get their first cup win. I think number eight makes it eight tonight. Jamie McDaniel Suarez has gone from the back to the front to the back to the front. He has battled through a ton of adversity tonight, continues to motivate and cheerlead his pick through in its race team. Daniel Suarez gets it done tonight. You left me crumbs. No, you left me cold <laughs> Custer. He has never finished in the top five at Charlotte before tonight. Never run in the top five before tonight. But he won at Kentucky in July of 2020. And he's having one of the best drives of his career tonight. So there are your Credit One Bank ones to watch. And the lead has changed. Ross Chastain has led 122 laps tonight. Takes the lead from Tyler Reddick. That was your pick, Jamie. Well, I jinxed him now, Clint. I've, I've taken your position, apparently. Big, big slide job. He actually lifted a little bit and gave him the spot, but Ross Chastain went after it quite quite a bit. i tell you the other thing. I hate to say it. Why they were racing side-by-side side hard, Larson really did shrink the gap up quite a bit well, behind them. And, and he's running a couple of tenths quicker than they have the past few laps. Was that your pick? It was, wasn't it? Yeah, but I mean, yeah. honestly, it's it, it, it's valid. He is running some scorching fast lap times, has all night long. He's been the one that's passed the most cars, obviously. But this Chastain, he's going to be a hard one to handle. There are the laps led on the pylon. Ross Chastain, 125 of them. Tyler Reddick has led 19 laps tonight. He is racing to remember Army Specialist Albert Tristan who was born in Monterey, Mexico, Daniel Suarez's hometown, came with his parents to Dallas, Texas at age six, graduated North Dallas High School, and nine months later enlisted in the U.S. Army. Uh, was killed in Vietnam July 6, 1970, age 21. He's going to have to make quick work of Reddick. Chastain's going to get away from him already. Hung Two tenths on both of these guys out there in clean air. Really has been a great race. Shaping up to be a good finish. Wouldn't expect anything less. Oh, he slipped up behind Reddick. Well, Reddick actually looked like he moved down right there, trying to exit a little bit lower. We, we saw him do that when he was behind Chastain as well. City vibration. Doesn't know what it is. Yep. But you were right. When he moved down, that channel of air behind these cars is so defined behind them. When they cross that lake, it takes the air off, and that nose takes off. You hear him talking about it. Be ready to be ready if he comes in. Well, and he's leaving that up to, to Tyler to make that decision. How bad is the vibration? If you need to come, come in. But if you can stay out, we need you to stay out. It's getting bad. It, didn't hear it. Last lap, barely heard it. The lap before this lap, I really hear it. If you hear a vibration, I'd say, Pitt, I agree with that. When they get bad enough, you can hear them. They don't get better. I don't think it's a rubber. Well, sounds like it to me. So what he's referring to right there is, is the rubber builds up inside of the wheels, and it makes the tire feel out of balance, and so you'll feel like a vibration. If it's in a front tire, you feel it in the steering wheel. But if it's in a rear tire, you just feel it all over in the car. So hard, or, uh, no flat. So hard to tell yourself to pit, though. You know the consequences. You know what you're up against on both sides of that equation. Well, and we're, we're 25 to 30 laps since they pitted. We've seen some tire issues tonight. You would think it would have already already happened if it was going to happen. But that's that's the fear is that if you blow that tire, your night's over. If you pit, it might be over. So to show you what we're talking about here, uh, Kyle Busch had a big rubber build up inside the wheel well and earlier uh, watch on the uh, left rear of Kyle's car some of that built up rubber is going to get loose and fall off but it piles up in there and that's a lot of rubber that's a substantial amount of rubber that will make a vibration yeah and it doesn't take that much inside of a wheel for for what Tyler is oh that, that was a squeeze wall. play right there wow Almarilla Got up into Eric Jones off the of four, puts him in the wall pretty hard. Not pretty hard, really hard. Take another look at this. Yeah, you almost think that maybe the air from the 19 
pushed Eric Amarola faster than he even thought he was going to be going. It's unfortunate for Eric Jones. Had such a great night going. That significant impact into the wall. I would say that has a, the makings of a toe link bent for sure. It actually looked like he hit more at the right front than the right rear, so the steering wheel's probably off a little bit. Larry, these drivers with vibrations or uh, alignment issues, how long are they going to ride this out before we get to green flag stops? Well, Mike, again, remember my Verizon race strategy, splitting the stages in half. We went back racing with 93 to go. I'm saying pit stops are going to come somewhere around lap 350 to 355, which would be 45 to 50 to go. That's about 20 laps from right now. That's splitting it in half. Well, we uh, have, are just getting to 500 miles right here. 333 laps on this mile and a half super speedway. Built by Bruton Smith and Curtis Turner in 1959 to 60. And host to two cup races a year ever since. We welcomed a lot of our nation's military to Charlotte Motor Speedway today to help us honor and remember. Jesse Punch here live with another report from Pit Road. Unfortunate circumstances for Tyler Reddick, who I just reported was hoping for his first win here today. He's now reporting vibrations for that race car. They're gonna bring it onto Pit Road and take a look at it. You know who is no longer complaining? Kyle Larson. If my math is right, he was forced to the back of the field five times today for different circumstances, different penalties, and here he is in third place. And will quickly be in second as that 18 brings it in. If there's anybody that knows how to get it done here today in Charlotte, it's defending champion and defending race winner Kyle Larson. That five car has his eyes on victory lane. There we go. Tyler Reddick said he felt a vibration and eventually a left rear tire went down. Debris on the racetrack has brought us under caution for the 15th time tonight with 61 laps to go. Watch the eight car. Yeah, it's down. You see him off the pace. Trying to get to the bottom of the racetrack. Definitely a left rear. Question is how much damage will be on that diffuser? You can see it dragging. Tough break. So many times this year, been in the running at the right time. It's just bad things seem to happen. You keep knocking on that door, I'm telling you, baby's gonna open and when it does, this kid's going to find victory lane a lot of times. Well, and the frustrating part 
as from a driver's perspective is he didn't do anything wrong. You, you can't help but lift your tire goes down. So it's not like the team did something wrong. Or the driver. Look at that. <laughs> He's wow. What a catch. Tyler Reddick trying to give Richard Childress racing its seventh victory in the Coca-Cola 600. And Christopher Bell will get the free pass. Pit roads open. Vince. What a great run it has been for the 41 of Cole Custer. Pits from fifth. He said it's just a little tight, but don't make a big adjustment. Just four tires and a slight air pressure, Jamie. And his teammate in the 14, Chase Briscoe, a little bit loose in three and four, just like last run. Four tires here. And the five of Kyle Larson, just too loose in the middle. Regan. Ross Chastain doesn't want anything different, just a good pit stop. He loves his race car right now. The 99 of Daniel Suarez, a good break for him. He just reported a vibration as well when the caution came out for Tyler Reddick. Didn't like this set of tires. Chastain Larson first off pit road. Briscoe Custer and Dillon gain spots. Suarez down three. As impressive as Chastain is on that racetrack, I'm going to give credit to that pit crew. Those guys, week in and week out, put him in the spot. They're solid stops. They don't ever, you know, win two or three spots, but they always put him on the money, never losing spots. That's what you need, that consistency on pit road. Great job. For the final time tonight, we'll bring in our ticker of U.S. service men and women lost in the last 12 months as Fox honors and remembers. They include from the Navy, Hospital Corpsman 3rd Class Maxton Soviak. From the U.S. Air Force, Lieutenant Colonel James Willis, Chief Master Sergeant Teresa King, Staff Sergeant Dennis Melton. For the United States Army, Specialist Alex Rahm, Specialist Joshua Robinson, Staff Sergeant Ryan Canose, First Sergeant Casey Hart. And from the United States Marine Corps, Lance Corporal David Espinoza, Sergeant Nicole G, Staff Sergeant Darren Hoover, Corporal Hunter Lopez, Lance Corporal Riley McCullum, Lance Corporal Dylan Marola, Lance Corporal Kareem Nikuyi, Corporal Dagan Page, Sergeant Johanny Rosario Pecardo, Corporal Umberto Sanchez, and Lance Corporal Jared Schmitz. Fifty eight laps to go in Charlotte on Stock Car Racing's longest night. All the drivers said this would be a long race, not because it's 600 miles, but because they expected a lot of caution flags. We've had 15 of them. Daniel Suarez currently in seventh. We listened in. Yeah, that's that ongoing saga of uh, those cars backing each other up on pit road. And uh, Suarez having difficulty right behind this group and these two. Now there's Suarez gets away. Uh, Hamlin a little bit slow off the marks with Logano right behind. And they will be uh, eighth and ninth or ninth and tenth when we get ready to restart here. It's just the worst case scenario where you, you try to pick those pit stalls where you're going to have a gap or, or an opening to get in or out. And, and it, it's so unfortunate the way they're all coming into pit road and, and blocking each other in. Look at Kyle Busch's night. After a, a spin, came wow. back from that in stage one, was all the way down to 24th in stage three. And now finds himself in seventh and in contention after an uncontrolled tire penalty back at lap 254. He's worked his way back. 
Charlotte Motor Speedway like a jewel in the night. Uh, just north of the Queen City, here's your aerial coverage provided by Goodyear with you for every mile on the road to greatness. Goodyear, more driven. That's ZMAX Dragway at the top of the screen in the background. The lights are on because that's used as an overflow parking area and the dirt track at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Well, NASCAR on Fox rolls on next week. Now for something new and completely different. This week in St. Louis is the start to an exciting new venture for these drivers. Watch as they forge through unfamiliar territory east of the Golden Arch. Many strive for victory lane, but only one can conquer this alluring asphalt. Be part of the exploration of FS1. St. Louis next Sunday on FS1. Michael Waltrip goes from the gridwalk to join Clint and me in the booth for St. Louis. And Sonoma, Tony Stewart makes an encore performance. Remember his last visit to Sonoma where he dueled Denny Hamlin right down to the finish and won. His last win. Uh, famed St. Louis native, uh, former Bush Series Cup racer and now dirt track ace, Kenny Wallace. I'm uh, going to stop by in St. Louis and say hi. Looking forward to having Mikey in the booth. Kind of completes the package for us, Mike. We've had them all. <laughs> Jamie, Larry, M-Dub. Everybody. It's been a fun year, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Chevy's on the front row for this restart with 55 to go. Ross Chastain and last year's winner, Kyle Larson. Ford's on row two, Custer and Briscoe. Then Suarez and Austin Dillon. Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin. Here we go. And a good push by Custer on the bottom. Same result. Puts that one car back out front. 20 cars on the lead lap, including Christopher Bell, who just got the free pass. Oh, oh Suarez. Briscoe got into Briscoe. the back of Suarez. And he gets pounded. Dang it. Oh, yeah. up push your upside down. I think he hooked a drain. And there's uh, the window net released, and Chris Busher is seen moving inside the car. The AMR safety team is right there to his aid. And Daniel Suarez climbs out. He had a great race going tonight. Going to go over and... Yes, he did. And, and I agree with his crew chief, Travis Mack. One of the fastest cars we've had just kept having trouble on pit road. One too many times for him. Came up in front of the 14. Briscoe got into him just at least a little bit, put him in the wall, and man, Chris Busher over and over. What a wild wreck that was. And Jamie, I'm with you. I believe Busher hooked something uh, there in that infield turf that sent that car tumbling. He either hooked a drain or it's where the, the turf and the asphalt meet because it looked like the car was just sliding and all of a sudden it just dug in. And once it did, it, it, it started rolling and wouldn't stop. I think that's the only second time we've had one of these cars over. Thinking of Harrison Burton at Daytona. Now, you can see when we take the onboard camera shots just how cocooned these drivers are in their seats. It's hard to get in and hard to get out of one of these cars. Now imagine when it's upside down. I, I have only flipped once and it was at Talladega and, and I clearly remember as I was, was rolling down the backstretch, I'm like, please just land right side up because 
I, I, I go into full panic mode, Clint, when things get upside down because you, you can't get out. You can't let the seatbelts loose or you, you fall to the roof of the car. And that's got to be so hard for, for Chris to sit in there well, even if and, you and wait on them right. to, to flip that car back over. There's just not a lot of room. And, and when you, again, let those belts off and the weight of yourself falls up on the roof of the car, you're just kind of in an awkward position. So very vulnerable position, obviously. But uh, sounds like he's OK. Looks like they're getting preparation to get it flipped over. You can see them talking to him. There's what dug in. Yep. So the race has been red flag. The uh, cars are stopped on the front straightaway just prior to the start finish line. Daniel Suarez climbed from his car uninjured. Uh, the other car involved, Chase Briscoe, was able to continue uh, without apparently much damage. There's Chase. And the uh, safety crew on the scene is going to work to right the car of, of Chris Buescher. They've got a strap on the uh, right side on the rocker panel. Going to hook that to the cable and then everybody out of the way as they bring this thing over, uh, up and over, to make it uh, much easier for him to get out of that car. Look at the damage to Suarez. That was just one hard hit. This is a very well organized machine in here. You see everybody, uh, the track safety crew in red, uh, the officials clearly marked, the record drivers are in a different color, and the AMR safety crew, uh, they're in white with red and white helmets. So everybody knows who everybody is and what their responsibilities are. Yeah, and, um, the, and the key here is that when you roll it over, you want it to, to go over softly. You want it to land on all four tires and, 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 and set down slowly. And you see steps on the boom of that wrecker. This is something that's new this year. Actually hired a wrecker service that follows this series week in and week out. These guys are professionals. They know what they're doing. I think you're going to see a very soft roll back over, just like you were asking. Yep. Or what you're talking about, Jamie. So they get this car up on the side very gingerly, and then uh, I believe that wrecker will be able to back up and uh, get that car back on its wheels. More importantly, I want to see him get out of that race car. Absolutely. So now the, the boom lowering and uh, the cable extending to uh, ease that car back over. You see his hands moving right there, yep. unhooking his helmet. And a, a very controlled process and everybody with, uh, with a role to play uh, and a purpose there and doing it well. And there is Chris moving around inside the car and uh, Great ready job. and I'll bet anxious to hop out of there. Oh, Great yeah. job getting that car back over. Absolutely. So Chris Busher is okay. He climbs out under his own power there. That's great. After a wild ride and just a horrendous flip, that car was sliding along and then caught something and just launched into a into a roll. So now let's have a look at replays and show you the first contact is going to be Chase Briscoe, the red and black car. Uh, on the outside there, and Daniel Suarez in the 99 down on the inside, inside of Briscoe. 
And see Suarez come up. Just wasn't clear. Caught the 14. Gets sideways. And here comes the impact. Hard hit. You see him spinning. The more you look at that, the whole right front suspension was broke off. I think it rolled underneath the car, and that's what flipped the car. The upper A-frame was broke. The whole right front suspension dug in. That was Todd Gilliland tried to go high and there just didn't have enough room. See that, that right front wheel dug underneath the car, and that's what dug in and caused it to start flipping. Violent. Violent crash. Now let's uh, ride along with Daniel. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, if, if, if you're Chris Buescher in that position and you, we've seen a lot of cars slide through the infield, the last thing you think is going to happen is that you're going to flip. I, that was the last thing he thought was going to happen. But I, I'm with Clint. It, it almost appears that that impact from Watch Suarez it spins around right breaks here. You see the right suspension. front. See oh, it flip right over? Yeah. Dug in. Upper A-frame was broken. As soon as it rolled underneath the car, it dug in and sent that thing a flipping. Wow. What a ride. A lot of work went into the safety of these race cars. See him crawl out of that thing. Hats off to everybody involved in that. And good to know that was nothing to do with the racetrack That's or right. the turf uh, that sent Busher's car over. Right, uh, right there where he gets a big piece of Suarez is where that right front goes. And when it, when it completely comes off and gets under the car. And you see the tether wow. That's is actually th holding that tire to the, the car so it doesn't fly up into the stands or, or go out into the racetrack. That's just a, a, a one in a million times that, that that could happen where that tire falls underneath the car and shoots the car up in the air. Tether did its job. Very impressed with that tether. Yes. Held on there, but uh, man, what a freak thing. And now here's Vince Welch with Daniel. Well, it all began with the contact of the 14 and the 99 of Suarez. What was your take on what happened there? Uh, just, I got tight. Uh, you know, this car's already cleaner. It's very important. And uh, they were side by side in front of me. I was fine with the front. And eventually I got in the middle of the wake and I got super tight. Uh, just, you know, uh, I, I, go, I put myself in a, in a bad situation there. Uh, I, I was very close with the 14. Uh, it's just a tough situation. I just hope uh, Chris is fine. My team, they, they, they built a rocket. We had the best car out there. Uh, we just, we, we, it was a struggle for us on P-Road. Not my guys, but the situation where we were with the 22 and the 11. But anyway, we have to learn from it and come back stronger. Glad you're okay. Glad that everybody is okay. Here's another look at it. And uh, watch for the contact from the 99, uh, from the 17 on the right front of the 17 of Busher's car. There's Todd Gilliland sending him spinning. And there was the hit right there that caused the big damage to Busher's car that ended up launching it up and over. You know, that's one of those one of those instances with, with Suarez and Briscoe that early in the race, Briscoe lifts. But there's 50 laps to go in this race. Yeah. You're trying to, to generate those runs and get the track position you can. You heard Suarez talk about, you know, how important clean air is. Oh. And we'll ride with Tyler Reddick. You can hear him on the brake, start downshifting to make sure he can get the car slowed down. Great job by Tyler to get his car slowed down and, and heads up spotting by his spotter to kind of give him a direction of, of where to go. Here's Kevin Harvick.
And one more look at this in real time. And the best shot of all is Chris Buescher climbing out of this car uninjured. I'm going to tell you, the, the three or four minutes that he spent upside down felt like an hour waiting on them to get that car turned over. But yeah. just a chain of events that happened to, for that car to flip. I mean, it was the perfect impact to knock the right front off, right? And then it just so happened to slide across there. You know, there's always things to learn and try to get better at, but I don't know that anybody, you know, with a car's design or anything else was a, a problem there. I really don't. And here's some uh, Chris Buescher. Or excuse me, Chase Briscoe audio. 99 just said he got loose there. Support. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't check out quick enough. Yeah, he said if he thought if he got out of the gas, that you were just going to turn him anyways, but that's what happened. It's all right. Chris Busher was racing to remember Lieutenant James Zimmerman from the United States Marine Corps from Smyrna Mills, Maine. Lost his life at age 25 in Helmand Province of Afghanistan. And Daniel Suarez was carrying the name of Marine Staff Sergeant Darren Hoover on uh, his windshield from Camp Pendleton, California, who died at age 31 last August in Afghanistan. Red flag with 52 laps to go. The cars have refired. A grinding crash for Daniel Suarez. Got hit three different times. Chris Busher up and over and ending on his roof but they all walked away Currently under caution for an intense incident on the front stretch. Thankfully, Chris Busher is okay, but wow, what a display of safety. Five and a half flips for that 17 car and not any damage to the greenhouse. Plus, as you see, plenty of safety vehicles immediately coming to his side. That is the AMR safety team. We see them at every single racetrack. In each one of those trucks, there is one paramedic and one AMR doctor. That crew handles everything from early in the race weekend, inspecting this racetrack, making sure every element of the surface is safe, to post-race following incidents, everything from protocol to inspecting these drivers, ensuring that they are okay and able to get back in the car. Seeing an incident like that for the 17 team really puts it in perspective just how many measures are in play to keep these guys safe. And it's all thanks to that AMR safety team out there responding right now.
A wild night in Charlotte. 15 cars out of the race. 16 caution flags. Started on lap 18. Ryan Priest spun. Uh, then winning the stage. Chase Elliott won the stage, but his night ended early. Ryan Blaney got down on the apron and up in front of the low, and then the top lanes, 12 cars involved, half of which went to the garage. Daniel Suarez wins stage two. A tire gets away, then another one for Kyle Busch, so they took their time on that pit stop, restarted at the back as Ross Chastain won stage number three. More drama, Joey Logano's tire changer uh, gets banged up by the pole sitter, Denny Hamlin. And then this, Daniel Suarez gets loose, Chase Briscoe gets into him, around he goes, Todd Gilliland piles in. Then Chris Buescher, who goes up and over and over and over and lands on his roof. They flip the car over, Buescher climbs out, and he is now with Vince Welch. Well, the great night of racing comes to a, a frightening halt for Chris Buescher. Just glad to see that he's out of the infield care center okay. How do you describe what we just saw there? Uh, it was a little, a little painful. Um, it's quite a shame. Our fifth third bank Mustang was was really good tonight. Our team did a terrific job from uh, from the start of the weekend through qualifying and into the race, and uh, we were able to drive our way up to the top ten. Uh, throughout the night, we are in a really good place sitting there. Had a couple sets of tires left, and... Really proud of everybody's effort there. Just a shame to uh, to be involved in that. So we checked up for it. We got running from behind and uh, finally seen the replay. I guess I guess the tire just ripped off and sent us flipping. So uh, so I, I guess I have been upside down before, but I was one was a bit more painful than the Talladega roll. So again, just appreciate everybody at Fifth Third Bank on board. It's uh, it's doing a good job for them. We were enjoying it. Uh, team did a nice job. Just that's a bummer. Mike. Yeah, not surprised to see Ross Chastain choose the inside right here, Mike. Five restarts in a row they've been on the inside, and that's one. that's been the one that's won uh, uh, the battle down into turns one and two. 48 laps to go at the stripe. Chastain and Larson in front of Custer and Briscoe. Chevys and Fords. First Toyota is Hamlin in fifth. With Larson's going to be able to hang on the outside, he's going to need a little more help from from uh, Chase Frisco behind him, Clint. Well, they got tangled up. It seemed like they tried to go, and how about that run Briscoe has on his teammate of Custer? Head to the bottom. Better block. Ooh. Oh, Larson moves down and, and blocks the run that Briscoe had coming. Briscoe checked up, though, for him. Got a run to the bottom for the yeah. lead. Larson's just going wherever Chastain isn't right now to try to get Chastain looking in the mirror, try to make him make a mistake right now with only 47 laps to go. Oh, he's going to get to his inside right here. Not quite. See if he's he can trying. make it stick and turn the door. He's going to have to slide up in front of him. I think he's going to do it. Yeah, he's going to clear him wow. on the exit of four right there. Kyle Larson, after the first 300 miles in which they had the car on fire, they had penalties, they had problems, and Larson called it the worst race of his life, and now he is leading it with 46 laps to go. Moved up and got him tight. You heard him have to lift out of the gas. Now he's blocking Briscoe behind him. Bottom white line inside. Briscoe's going to be shooting to the outside. Clears, crossover coming. I don't know what happened to Chastain, but his car is not good after this restart. Yeah, it's it either it doesn't like this set of tires or they've made an adjustment that just doesn't seem to have the speed. I mean, he's been the best car the last 200 laps of this race, but but now clearly it looks like he's off just a little bit. Cannot believe that five either. car is in the lead <laughs> after the night that they've had. Cliff Daniel better get a bonus for this one. That was the best pep talk in the history of pep talks. We've screwed up the first half every possible way. <laughs> Driver, pit crew, everybody. The second half, we are going to be golden. He talked Kyle Larson into it, and here they are out front. Just goes to show you, you never give up in this business. Never give up. Uh, Cliff Daniels is a good leader. 
that's what you do when, when you get down. You, you build the driver back up. It's easy inside the car to get down, but Crew Chief does a, did a great job of getting him pumped back up for the second half of this race. I'll tell you what, Denny Hamlin and Logano have been going at it. For, oh, oh, Whoa. Oh, oh, told you. <laughs> they really have, whether it's on pit road or on the racetrack, they cannot get away from one another. The two are putting on a show. Paul Custer hanging right with him. Here's a better look at it. This got really close. Well, Hamlin was clear. He just, the, Joey had such a run coming from, from running the high side three and four. He was Second place. Near. Here comes Chastain back on the bottom. Hmm. See, now Chastain's going to have to do something that he didn't want to do. He's going to have to make a pass on the bottom. He's been up on the outside of this racetrack all night long. That's where he's been able to make the lap time. He's going to be forced. Briscoe nor the five car Larson, they're not going to give him that outside. If he's going to pass these cars, he's going to have to do it on the bottom. Eighth place, Austin Dillon, Eric Jones. Unbelievable, Eric Jones is even in this conversation, hard into the wall off of four earlier. Just what was it, a, a stage ago back in the game. Yeah, and as you look at the lap times right now, Clint, Kyle Larson ran almost a qualifying lap just after this restart on lap 354. And uh, Christopher a... Bell got his lap back. He is back in the top 10. Started third in this race. And Briscoe's not going away either. You say Larson was running good. That's a stout lap time of a 30-30, but Briscoe's at a 30 team. Fourth and fifth, sixth and seventh. That seems to be where the, yeah. the energy is in this lead group and where the action's going to be. Yeah, and it's, it, you know, it's interesting to me, Clint, to see the line that Larson's running. He's, he's right in the middle of the racetrack. You see those guys behind him, Chastain, running just a little bit higher. To me, Larson likes the balance of his car right now, being able to run in the middle, because if those guys start to catch him, we know how good he is around the top, and he'll get right up against the wall like we saw at Kansas. Now, Cole Custer is trying to pressure Denny Hamlin, but if Custer looks up in his mirror, he is going to see Kyle Busch closing in. Going back to Cliff Daniels and the job that he's done, obviously that pep talk keeping everybody under, you know, under uh, check there, but keeping up with this racetrack, I think that car's damaged. Kyle Larson hit the wall pretty hard earlier in the race. I think he's done a good job of, of not only keeping up with the racetrack conditions, but making adjustments on that car to where Kyle Larson in that car can make some uh, some passes, make it maneuverable, and run the lines like you're talking about in the middle of the racetrack. Yeah, Kyle said a little bit ago that he was loose in the middle of the corner, which isn't something that you typically hear out of any driver. It's normally loose in or off and tight in the middle, but they've gotten the balance of that car better. Cliff Daniels has made some nice adjustments to that. Larson's running great lap times right now. Seems to be the best car on the track at this point. Seems to be. Jamie Little on our leader. It is just unbelievable what they have overcome. And I'll tell you, I give all the credit to the man on top of the box there, Cliff Daniels, and what he has done to just motivate this team. Don't give up. Let's stay in it. We've overcome a lot. We're not out of it. And you know who that reminds me of? Chad Knauss. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Cliff's ups and downs of emotion, Clint, remind me of the driver, Kyle Larson. It's like the, the highest highs, the same same emotion on his face as the lowest low. Yep. I didn't know where you were going with that, but that's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. Perfect pair. Denny Hamlin. These two can't Joey get Logano. enough. They're at it again, aren't they? And that'll bring Cole Custer right up on Logano. But them leaders are right there. You saw in his in car, they're right there in front of these two. Right there, Christopher Jones, Eric Bell side by side. Eighth place. Gain of six for Bell since this restart. Gain of three for Jones. Jones right there on the bubble picture. We talked about it in pre-race, Jamie. Needing a good run. Grinding this race out. Another solid run. Been all over the place, just like everybody in this race. 23rd, 14th, 3rd, 11th, 8th. Knocking on the door of a top 10. Yeah, and you talked about the big contact that Eric Jones had on the exit of turn four. It looked 
way more significant than what we saw Chase Elliott have. I think it just has to do with the angle of how you hit, how flush you hit. Is it more the right rear quarter panel or is it the wheel that hits the wall? I'm looking for cars in the top 10 that have not had a problem tonight and I'm seeing uh, Austin Dillon and Joey Logano and maybe Denny Hamlin. That's about it. It's been one of those nights hadn't it boys. Nice move for Custer but Logano coming off the high side of turn two comes right back to his bumper. Thirteenth place, Stuart Haas teammates, Harvick and uh, Eric Almarola, who has said at the start of the year this will be his final season in the Cup Series, wants to devote uh, time to his growing family. Ross Chastain has led 144 laps of this race and currently sits third. Regan. Well, Mike, I just checked with the team. There has not been a word on the radio from Ross Chastain about that race car right now. Super focused on trying to get back to the front, but no comments from the driver. Thirty one laps to go. Two Chevys, two Fords, one Toyota in the top five. Now Kyle Busch closing on Joey Logano. Yeah, take a look, Clint, at the line. Kyle Larson, I, I said this a little bit ago, he liked this car earlier because he was running the, the middle of the track. His lap times are fading a little bit. Chase Briscoe, Ross Chastain have started catching him. Look at the line that he's moving. He's searching around right now. He's went all the way to the wall. The line very similar to what we saw Joey Logano running earlier in the race. To me, this is kind of his crutch. This is where he's going to go when he's trying to find the last bit of grip. But it takes me back to that Xfinity race. I vividly remember, I watched that race right up in the middle of one and two. I watched the seven car started to get loose, got to the lead, passed uh, Josh Berry, his teammate, got to the lead, started to get loose into the corner. Josh Berry catches him, makes a pass, gets loose, gets into the wall. That might be what's happening to that five. Start getting loose in. Can't carry that speed. Move up, try to make the track bigger. Yeah, those, those two behind are catching him. About two to three tenths a lap, which is a ton at Charlotte. But catching him and passing him will be two different things. Kyle Larson on an 11 race winless streak. That is the longest of his career since joining Hendrick Motorsports. 29 laps to go in Charlotte. Side by side. Charlotte Motor Speedway, and I'm sure it's felt like an even longer day for the five of Kyle Larson. We have heard him all day long complaining on the radio, and in turn, we have heard crew chief Cliff Daniels cheering him on all day long. And now, with just under 25 laps to go, Larson is the one out front of the field. Despite all of the errors and issues he's faced today, he is pacing the field and on his way to victory lane. Noting this is on par to be the longest Coca-Cola 600 we have ever had in racing history. 79 laps of caution. To put that in perspective, a stage here is 100 laps. This is an endurance race, no doubt, and we are in the final stretch.
24 laps to go in Charlotte. Kyle Larson out in front by four tenths of a second. The first half of this race, Kyle Larson called the worst race of his life. And here's just some of what happened to Kyle Larson in the first half. That's uh, removing equipment from the pit box. Restart in the back. Uh, that's bouncing off the wall and keep on going. And a tire gets away. That's removing equipment and interference. Oh, we just had a little fire on pit road and in the filler neck. Nothing to write home about there. And then around he goes. And here's another loose tire that gets away. And all this happens in the first 200 laps of the race. So crew chief Cliff Daniels, former driver who used to race late models at South Boston Speedway in Virginia, told Kyle this. In the first half, all I want you to remember is how good a TV we made. We went from the back to the front more times than I can count. We hit the wall, we spun out, we literally caught on fire. We are also the most penalized team on pit road in the first half. All that means is that in the second half, already we're going to be starting way better than what we started the first half. We've got to go execute right now. I don't really know what the hell you're worried about, but I'm fine. The team's fine. Everybody down here is nodding their heads and giving a thumbs up, so let's go. Yep, I'm fine. I'm ready. And he's leading by six tenths of a second coming to 20 laps to go. Amazing. That's the way this whole night has gone. Some people don't have that much stuff happen to him in a season. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sixth place, Joey Logano, Christopher Bell uh, moving forward here. Now Chase Briscoe in second half a second back. He's got his elbows up. He's trying everything he can well, to catch the, Kyle Larson. The 14 ran Larson down. Ran was running a tenth and a half or two quicker and it looked like he caught a piece of the wall off of turn four. Had a really slow lap but he is regrouped and he is now tracking Larson down again. But when I'm watching this Clint it just appears Larson's right up against the wall. Briscoe is able to run that one car link lower, but he's going to have to do some type of a slide job in order to clear him because the lanes that they're running, he won't be able to make that pass. Well, and looking ahead, there's just not lap traffic that's racing door to door that's going to, you know, take that line away from your leader, Kyle Larson. He's going to have to do it the old school way and try to figure out as he catches him move down in the middle of the racetrack like you see him doing right there and try to find a way around him. But I agree. As we were replaying Cliff Daniels, you know, uh, a speech to his team, I'm thinking, boys, you better hurry because this 14's catching him in a hurry. And then he got a, off a of four, lost a lot of ground. But the way this night's been, I don't think this race is, I think it's far from over. You know, Mike, Clint, and Jamie, I've been emailing, texting. I even sent a <laughs> pigeon over to the racetrack to get me some information. And if we do get a caution, we're 30 laps into this run. By my calculations, everybody should have at least one set of sticker tires laying for that final stop. Well, that's amazing, Larry, because we had 11 caution flags in the first half of the race. And uh, what, only five since, counting a stage break. Fifth place. Christopher Bell keeps marching forward. Well, and the, here, here's the thing. As we watch Briscoe running Larson down, watch how much deeper Briscoe can drive into the corner than Larson. That tells me that Larson's car is either loose on entry or it's not turning when it lands. Watch how much faster he's able to drive into the corner and close up this gap on Kyle. Right there, there look is. at that. And that's exactly what I was talking about, the Xfinity race with Allgaier and his teammate, Josh Berry. Allgaier got started to get loose into the corner, couldn't get in. Berry was driving in way deeper and was able to capitalize and make a pass. Forced a mistake. Flip side of that, if you're the five car, don't let him drive you into the corner too hard, get loose, and get this thing out from underneath of you in the wall. Stay disciplined in that car. The race is on, boys. 14 laps to go. And it's so amazing after everything we've been through, four plus hours, 386 laps, then it's all coming down here to the end with these two guys going to give us a great battle to the end of this race.
You know, it's a lonely feeling what you see right there with those two crew chiefs. The only thing they could do is if that caution comes out. But other than that, it's up to that driver and up to those spotters. Yeah, and Larson just changed his line. Did you see that? He sees that Briscoe's running a little bit lower. He tried to move down and take some of the air away from, away from Chase uh, on the exit of turn four. They're both utilizing their strong suits. Oh, into the wall goes Christopher Bell, and he is slow on the racetrack. Looks like he's going to get down to the apron and apparently no debris as we stay green with 13 to go. He's down the back straightaway. Long ways around here. Man, please stay green. What a race we have for the lead. Seven different teams in the top 10. What a season it's been so far. Man, I just go back to, to the Bristol dirt race, and you think about the chance that Chase Briscoe took trying to slide past Tyler Reddick going back and down into turn three. Are we going to see something similar to that tonight? Christopher Bell has made it to pit road, so no caution. Obviously has a tire down or some sort of mechanical issue. The car turned right into the wall. They'll put right sides on it and send them back out. We'll be coming to 10 to go next time. Briscoe is doing everything he can do again to try to utilize his strong suits. That's getting into the corner, putting the pressure on the five. All you can do there is just try to get close enough, put pressure on him, and make a mistake getting into the corner. Well, and Larson's going to start screaming because if you look up ahead, Harrison Burton is about, a, a, I don't know, 100 yards up ahead of him running that high line. He's going to start screaming immediately because of the dirty air that's going to come from that. I think Briscoe's actually lost a little bit of the advantage that he had. He was able to, to track Larson down, but it seems like as he's gotten here, he doesn't have quite the, the entry speed that he had four or five laps ago. It seems like his car is kind of leveled out. Well, I think it's get tight, obviously, in the wake of that car. Just like you said, you, you said it earlier, Larson moved down, took his line away off of four, starts to get tight, leaning on the tires harder and harder. It's getting close, though. Jamie Little. Johnny Cosmeyer, the crew chief for the Ford team coming into this race, he said, you know, the Fords are down on speed a little bit, but we really believe that our car balance is good enough, and if we hang in there, manage our own race tonight, we'll be good. But one of their weaknesses has been the inconsistency of pit road. They made a change this week, a rear changer came on board. They have been perfect tonight. That has helped this team show what they're capable of. And Mike, they need to do it one more time. But here's the thing, if I'm Kyle Larson, don't be predictable. Don't do the same thing every single lap. Eric Almirola has been in the wall. No cover both ways. No caution yet. Caution. Nope. Eight to go. As I was saying, I, I don't want to do the same thing every single lap if I'm Kyle Larson because that gives Chase Briscoe a plan. I want to move around. I'm going to enter a little lower one lap, driving a little deeper one lap. Don't give him the same thing every lap and try to set you up for the end. No debris, track is clear, we stay green. You can see Kyle Larson, he's losing the one. Being very gingerly getting into the corner. There's the 10, actually spinning. Really pretty small, small. contact right there, just, yep. just got loose. Again, going back to Kyle Larson, you can watch him getting off into one here. He's definitely very gingerly with it getting into the corner. Backing that thing up, see the pipes throwing flames out, tells me he's out of the gas. Let's it gets rotated and early to the throttle. So can Briscoe, where is he going to find enough clear air, clean air on the nose of that car so that it'll stick and he can make the pass? It's Capitalize on a bobble. The five is going to have to bobble for him to make get close enough to make a move. Eric oh. Jones tagged the wall in two. We stay green. Or if if, Lar if you can get close enough to Larson on the last lap, you try to do a slide job. Look, those are two dirt racers. Well, they both know there what to expect. That's what he's going to have to have. Keep putting that pressure on him. Force a mistake out of the five. And because Larson's having to lift from being so loose on entry, that only makes that even better for Chase Briscoe, knowing he can generate that speed. If I think back to qualifying, Denny Hamlin running the bottom of three and four. He's there. Four balls. Now he's going to be able to try to force the five into the corner hard. Five's going to have to be careful here. 
He's going to have to maintain that position if he lets him slide in front of him. The race is over. Here it comes. Oh, the spotter wanted him to. Almost the exact same thing with Kurt Busch and Kyle Larson at Kansas, but Kyle Larson was able to, to get back to Chase Briscoe's outside right there. You heard the spotter say, take it, take it. Didn't do it. Five back to the lead. Three laps to go. Going to have to run him back down here, Jamie. Put that pressure back on him. Capitalize on that. You know his weakness. We know he can't get into the corner. Try to drive that thing off in there. That being said, you can't overdrive your car. If you get up in there and miss the marks one two more time with three laps to go, it'll be too late. Oh, yeah, and if I'm Larson, I'm looking in my mirror, and I'm just trying to give you a little bit of dirty air. I don't want you to get to my left rear quarter panel, though, and pull now it back. I like it. it up. I moved down just a little bit, trying to take a little bit of that air away from you. Two laps to go. Here he comes again. Not clear, oh, and away he goes. We're in the wall here. Get it back rolling. Get it back rolling. Come on. And the caution <laughs> waves. Hey, don't think Kyle Larson wanted to see that either. Absolutely not. That was Chase Briscoe's one shot. Well, I don't think this is one shot. I don't I, think I, this I, is I one think shot. It's a shot he took. Not. Yeah, it's it's one it's when the opportunity presented itself to him right there. They had a good battle going, I, but I don't think that was his only shot. The one thing I will say, I like that that kid will go for it. That's yeah, the second time. time that we've seen him do that. Oh, yeah. I, I think that that was his best chance. Maybe it wasn't his only chance, but he might not have gotten another one. Well, because you just don't know who, if you're going to bobble. We, we've seen him bobble a couple times and take a couple laps to get the the, the speed back up. I like the decision he made right there, though, Clint. He got to his inside. They had a good race. I don't think Chase Briscoe did anything wrong. I think he's going to go back and look at, uh, you know, the, the run he had before that when he was actually clear for just a minute. Maybe could have slid up. Boy, he got it off in there, didn't he? It looked like he was going to try to slide up in front of Kyle, but just it wasn't far enough up beside him, and the car got loose and got out from underneath him. This presents a, a you know, a, a strategy call and a problem for Cliff Daniels and Kyle Larson. Just because he's a leader of this race, now they got a decision to make. Boy, I'm telling you, this is a tough one, guys. It's going to be an overtime finish. Briscoe's got four fresh tires. He's already pitted. You've got 14 drivers on the lead lap. You're going to see people do opposite of what that five does. If that five pits, Chastain pits, you're going to see some drivers stay out. But there's 46 laps on these tires. That's going to be a tall order. Now, we are not yet in an overtime situation. Well, we are now, yeah. Six laps to go is what they put up on the board. As we hit lap 400, that is the scheduled distance. So we will go to NASCAR overtime. Jamie Little. Well, Rick Hendrick just climbed up on the box to have words with Cliff Daniels as they discuss it. Cliff Daniels told his driver, all right, I'm thinking here, Abe Lincoln. So we have to watch. I don't know if that means they're coming in, they're staying out, but we'll figure out the code word here in a moment. So that's what, either a penny or a $5 bill? Take your pick. Yeah, right? your guess is as good as mine, Mike. Ross Chastain won the truck race on Friday night uh, because the two cars that were raced, two trucks that were racing for the win, uh, one slid up into the other, took them both out, and Chastain won on a last lap pass in overtime. I tell you right now, that's exactly what Ross Chastain was hoping that would happen. Harrison Burton gets, I believe, is the free pass on this. The 17th caution of the night, not a record. The record is more, 22. Here's a five chance to bounce back. That crew's had a trouble tonight. Vince? Cole Custer asked about the possibility of staying out. Crew Chief Mike Shiplett said, no, we're coming to get four tires, and you're going to win this race. We're about to see, Jamie. Abe Lincoln means right side only for the five. Kyle Larson, Regan. Ross Chastain tight that entire run. Had to come get some tires for that in the 11 car. Danny Hamlin fired off good. Tight in traffic for him. Close race off pit road. Very close. Larson. 
Barely. Really close. Sure right he didn't there. speed. So he will have lane choice over Chastain if, but let's see if indeed they are the leaders. We'll double check to make sure everyone on the lead lap pitted. Wow. Wow, Man. that's close. So close. The race like, is on. I like the call, though, the two tires, Clint. You're going to have a little bit of what you need and some track position. So Larry confirms for us all the lead lap cars followed Kyle Larson down pit road, which is ex exactly what he wanted to see, needed to see. And, and we he, know that Abe Lincoln is two tires at this point. And <laughs> Larson and Chastain will be on the front road for the restart. So NASCAR overtime. Green white checker if all goes well the checkered flag ends the race. However if the leader takes the white flag under green flag conditions the next flag ends the race whether it's the caution or the checker. And Larson's going to have a decision to make here about which which lane choice where is he going to choose the top or the bottom. The bottom has won the last six restarts and the other reason that I like the bottom is that as long as you protect the inside it's the, you know, no one when you're in the outside people can make it three wide on you and that drags that lane back a little bit and they will do that at the end of this race so I like the inside. All right, the lights did not turn off on the caution car, so we'll have at least two more laps of caution. And they'll choose next time. Leader by 100 mile intervals tonight. Chase Elliott now out of the race at 100 and 200 miles. Daniel Suarez also out, was the leader at halfway. Ross Chastain led the next 200 mile intervals and Kyle Larson the leader at 600 miles. Thanks for staying up late with us. Wow, what a finish. Chase Briscoe making a really bold move on Kyle Larson for the win. It ends up causing the 17th caution flag of the night. Briscoe is still out there, but he'll restart 15. I think Larson takes the inside here. It's going to put Logano. You know it's going to be a really good pusher, obviously an aggressive pusher. But as long as you can block him on the bottom, I think the inside line is the right line. Wild card, wild card. Ricky Stenhouse in fourth place. I see that out there. I, I'm with Clint, though. I, I'm, I'm sticking with taking the bottom uh, on the, on this restart. What? What you're going to have to be careful of, though, is that they're going to be on two tires. The other, the, the left sides are going to have 40 laps on them. You could see some wheel spin, and we haven't really seen that come into play, but I like the move Larson made right there. There it is. There's the choose, and there are the results. So Chastain will have Stenhouse behind him. Larson will have Logano. And we are about to have the longest race in the history of the NASCAR Cup Series. In 2020, the Coca-Cola 600 went 405 laps. We're going to be at 405, 406 when this one checkers. Chastain's going to have to race Larson on this restart, but he's also going to have to be looking in his mirror because I will be shocked if Ricky Stenhouse Jr. stays in line to the exit of turn two. Stenhouse has to win to make the playoffs. He, it's a, it's a, a team, look, three top tens in a row. They have been running well, but Ricky Stenhouse Jr. needs to win this race to make the playoffs. Chastain's going to have his hands full with, between Larson and Stenhouse. Too big of a push on those front cars, you know, by the second row. That can enable their, or, or you know, amplify their wheel spin like you were talking about. If either one of those cars hits them just a little bit too hard, you could uh, really get their wheels spinning and back that line up. The other, I think you're right. Ricky Stenhouse, 26 race regular season win and you're in. He doesn't have enough points to make the playoffs. Needs this win right here. But can he get it from fourth place? It'll be green, white, checker. Larson Chastain on the front row. Logano Stenhouse in row two. Hamlin Dillon in row three. Kyle Busch, Cole Custer, Harvick, and Ty Dillon. Here we go. Pretty even drag race. Clear. clear up. Three makes it three wide. Here. Dylan. Stenhouse in trouble in the back. Comes a big run by that three on four tires. Look He's out. There. Here it is. He's there on Kyle Larson. Austin Dillon bobbles just a little oh, bit. Oh, now he's on the outside. Chastain's got him. Four wide. Oh. Oh, they're wrecking. Unbelievable. 
Did the caution come out? They get the yes. white? No. Caution before the white. Caution. We will line up and do it wow. again. Oh, my gosh. All those guys going for it coming off of turn four. Austin Dillon looked like he was in the perfect position. Well, he was. <laughs> he was. And much like Chase Briscoe, Austin Dillon had a chance to try to win it, and he took it. Caution for sure before the white flag. Ah, Chastain's heavy damage. That's caution flag number 18. I'm really surprised at the run that those four tires had. You knew they were going to be good, but man, I was surprised they were that good. All right, we're going to go all the way back to the restart because there's a lot to unpack here and a number of drivers that get big runs to try to get to the front as Austin Dillon climbs from his machine. You see he restarts sixth, third car on the outside. But, and Logano gave Larson a good shove down into one, and I thought when he had Chastain cleared right here, I, I thought the race is over. Yeah, but, but hold on a minute. Watch the three car. He already had him three wide on the outside. Watch the run that he gets. When they come off turn two out of nowhere, here comes a three right now. Three wide on the bottom, shoots to the bottom on the four tires, goes for broke. Larson didn't seem coming. But when Larson got didn't get up in front of Chastain, that's when I think all the trouble happened. I still thought Larson was okay, Jamie, if he would have got up in front of the one and utilized that push. When they got three wide, it was actually four wide by the time they got off and just... Well, it, it, it looks room. like Austin Dillon came up a little bit, not knowing that they were three wide there, that Chastain was to the outside of Larson and got hooked and turned to the outside wall. Now, what I just saw there was the seas parted for Kyle Busch, and he shoots the gap right through there as we ride with Ross Chastain. You see Larson move down. Now you see him out of the gas and pushing. You see the front tires at literally turning way tight. He couldn't get up in front of Chastain because of that. Holy cow. Did not see that coming. Let's ride with Kyle Busch as he gets through here. Wow. Next, we'll ride with Joey Logano. Uh, still coming, still coming. Keep coming. Mid three, mid three, mid three, mid three, mid three. Bottom is clear, bottom is clear. Low, 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 And we'll ride with Kevin Harvick. This is back. not what you want to see in front of you, Jamie. Wow! Four wide in front of you, all of them wrecked, and you part the seas. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you the one thing that I missed in all this. Denny Hamlin was on the inside of Austin Dillon and had the momentum. I think whether they wrecked or not, I think Denny Hamlin was going to be the leader of this race. Yeah, he was the four wide. I've stopped writing down the numbers of cars involved in crashes. I just put 18th caution, everybody. <laughs> Joey Logano climbs from his car. He's a, everybody is okay as a result. Well, okay might not be the right word. Everybody is unhurt. Let's put it that way. Long night. Long night for everybody. Long night to end up like this. Just a lap from the finish. Cole Custer. Among those involved, so Eric Almirola getting serviced. And there are seven cars involved in that incident coming off turn number four with what would have been the white flag. And Austin Dillon got the worst of it. His car already on the way back to the garage. Man, how close was Austin Dillon to his second Coke 600 yeah. win? So we saw Kyle Busch, Harvick, and Stenhouse get through there without damage, uh, along with Denny Hamlin, the race leader, who scooted underneath it, as you mentioned. So that's four of the top five undamaged. Michael McDowell, uh, who got his first top ten starting spot of the season, uh, is up there in sixth. 
Harrison Burton seventh. Ty Dillon eighth. Chase Briscoe, remember him? He's back up in ninth place and Martin Truex tenth. Now the NASCAR overtime rules call for unlimited attempts at green white checker. It's a good point Mike. Harrison Burton may be en route to his best finish in the Cup Series which began in February at the Daytona 500 for the Wood Brothers. So we still have 17 cars on the lead lap. Uh, Cole Custer two la is now two laps down. Uh, he and Cody Ware. As we get ready for the second attempt at overtime sponsored by Credit One Bank. Chase Briscoe had what might have been his best shot to win it. Lost control of the car, uh, spun out, sent us to overtime. Austin Dillon had a great run that almost carried him all the way to the lead. Now what? <laughs> well, it's been a quiet night for Denny Hamlin, obviously setting on the pole, but he now finds himself in the best position, four tires, uh, and going to start on the front row. And when this weekend all started, the Gibbs cars. <laughs> Think back, it seems like a month ago, but practice and qualifying, the Gibbs guys. We left yesterday thinking Gibbs was going to dominate this race. Lo and behold, look who is in the catbird seat at the end of this long race. And in the first part of this race, Kevin Harvick was junk. The car wouldn't go. They had two pit stops that both went awry. They got blocked. They couldn't get out of their box. Now here he sits up there in the top five. This is a without to a steal doubt one. the wildest, the craziest Coke 600 that has ever happened. Has to be, right, Mike? You're the only one that can know this <laughs> for a fact. I'll tell you what I'm excited about. You know what's coming up in 15 minutes? And I bet you're going to tell us. The, the win. Well, I don't even know if I can declare a winner in 15 Happy minutes. birthday, Boyer! <laughs> it's your birthday? Oh, my gosh. Yes. I, feel I like, like the John Deere tractor. I like that. I also like that whiskey. Uh, I saw a whiskey on somebody's car. I might have put a little of the whiskey with his cake <laughs> later, huh? Thanks, boys. Okay, how how about you? that? How old are you? 50. Yeah, you look about 50. What? We'll have not a recount. 50. I know you're not. Thanks, fellas. 40, 43? Yeah. Happy birthday, buddy. Yeah. I, man, I think so. <laughs> it's a rough one. <laughs> All right. How about oh. that? Hmm. Frosting. Vince. Boy, Austin Dillon gave it a heck of a run. Thought you had it there. Uh, take us through that last moment. I hate it for our Bass Pro Shops team. The guys gave me a great opportunity there and made it happen on the restart and drove into three. And I just got a little loose right there and tried to make it stick and didn't quite work out there. Um, I don't know. I wish looking back, I would have backed up three and four just a little bit. But I mean, I sent it in there. I had to do what I had to do and try to win the race where we are in points. But we really weren't that great all night, and we just kept ticking away. And my pit crew were unbelievable. I can't thank those guys enough. And Johnny Morris, Bass Pro Shops, are sticking with us. And we had a shot right there, and that's all I can ask for. It's been cool to bring home another 600. Yeah, good dig. Glad you're okay. Chase Briscoe had a shot. Austin Dillon had a shot. And now we're going for our second attempt at overtime as Cole Custer's car is hauled to the garage. His night is done. So, Larry, what's the tire situation on these cars that are going to contend for this win? Yeah, we've got a mixed bag in the top five. You've got Hamlin, you've got Kyle Busch and Harvick all in the top five. They only have about two laps on their tires. And you've got Chastain and Stenhouse on that last trip to pit road. They went with right sides only, so their left side tires have 48 laps on them. Again, that's Chastain and Stenhouse, both in the top five. More importantly, Chastain on this front row has a lot of damage on the front of his car. Kevin Harvick in the four, going to have to make quick work of Chastain, get around him, much like that three car did on the outside. Tyler Reddick back in the mix. He's on the lead lap in 10th place. He'll start next to Chase Briscoe in ninth. I can't believe you just said that. I, I honestly, I cannot believe <laughs> some of these cars that are sitting here in the running to win this race. 
Kevin Harvick trying to end a 56 race winless streak. And look at that 42 of Ty Dillon. That is the only car that is nowhere to be seen on my caution sheet tonight. Yet. Well, okay. Yet, Mike. No caution incidents. Not over. No yet. incidents, no penalties. All right, green white checker. Let's try it again. Hamlin and Chastain, Kyle Busch and Harvick, Stenhouse and Truex. Look at the damage on Chastain on the outside. Harvick knows he's going to get to them. Here comes Kyle Busch to the outside. What a move. Kyle Busch trying to steal another one. Teammates, Bush and Hamlin, Stenhouse to the bottom, Harvick up top. Hold it strong, cannot let him up. Coming to the white flag. White flag, no help, either one direction. Next flag ends the race. Man, Denny Whoa. drove it up oh, in there. Gonna... Same thing, just like early in the race. Cal Bush gets loose on the outside. Power move by Denny Hamlin. He's got no help by two. By... The longest and one of the most exciting Coca-Cola 600s ever comes down to the final corner. Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch, teammates at Joe Gibbs Racing, and they come to the line. Hamlin wins by two car lengths. What a race. Forty-eighth career win for the 41-year-old from Chesterfield, Virginia. Way to stay in it, guys. The crew, awesome job. New guys, well done. Very well done. Hamlin now tied with NASCAR's first repeat champion, Herb Thomas, on the all-time win list, 16th. Coach Gibbs to celebrate with his crew. Second win of the season for Hamlin. Tied with William Byron and Ross Chastain for most victories. Denny Hamlin racing to remember Wentzville, Missouri's Marine Lance Corporal Jared Schmitz, who was lost in Kabul, Afghanistan at age 20. The longest 600 in history. And yeah, Ricky Stenhouse did get his fourth straight top 10. And Kyle Busch misses the checkered flag by 14 one hundredths of a second. Briscoe back to the top five. Yes. Harvick, long awaited top five finish for him. All about grinding it out tonight. Coach Gibbs sounds as surprised as many here at Charlotte Motor Speedway sellout crowd to celebrate Denny Hamlin. Regan. What a absolutely wild Coke 600. Denny Hamlin, you faced adversity before we got here this weekend. You faced adversity during the race Memorial Day weekend. Tell me what this win means to you. Uh, it's so special. I mean, it's the uh, last uh, big one that's not on my resume. It, it meant so much. and. Um, Man, just can't thank this whole FedEx team enough. Uh, Jordan Brand, Shady Rays, Toyota, Coca-Cola. I'm a, I've been a Coke uh, family driver for 18 years and uh, never won the Coke 600 before. So this means a lot. And uh, man, we just we weren't very good all day. It just uh, got ourselves in the right place at the right time. And uh, what a battle there. Denny Hamlin wins the Coke 600. Kyle Busch second, Kevin Harvick third, Chase Briscoe fourth, Christopher Bell fifth, Tyler Reddick sixth, almost all of whom had some adversity during the night. Vince? Kyle Busch led 36 laps and uh, had a shot at the end, 14 hundredths of a second difference. Anything else you could have done? No, nah, I don't think so. We didn't, uh, 
we didn't have a good enough day to even be in that position. So, um, you know, just a strong fight all night long by this m and team and um, give honor to those that we remember here on Memorial Day weekend. So, um, you know, appreciate um, the opportunity and being able to do that. We had Sergeant Theme on here with us this weekend. So um, tried to come out with Victory Lane and um, honor them, but unfortunately one spot short. Well done. Jamie? Kyle Larson, we talked about him all night. He passed more cars than anybody started in the back. The penalties, the fire, getting in the wall again. You almost had a shot there at the end to win it. How did you guys stay in it? Uh, yeah, long race, thankfully. Um, yeah, I mean, I, the first half was uh, a struggle uh, for all of us, but I was especially frustrated with myself. So um, to rebound from that and, and have a shot to win there late was... Uh, was well, something to be proud of. Um, our team fought really hard, so you're happy with that. Um, Briscoe is really good. Uh, that long, long run there, and um, wish we would have just been a little bit better, so he never would have got to me to, uh, you know, work really hard and, and then ultimately spin. So, um, and then yeah, I mean, just you're kind of gambling on on tire stuff there. Um, you know, I think we we took two to try and give ourselves you know the front row, which we did, and. Um, yeah, I think the four tires were just a little bit better than me and, and got to my inside there through three and four. And then it's just really tight racing off of four. And uh, the three almost had me clear, and uh, we just made contact there. And, um, you know, there was a big wreck. So uh, kind of end of my night there. But, again, you know, proud of my, my Hendrick team. Um, even going back to yesterday, me making the mistake, getting the wall, really put ourselves in a bad spot all night. You know, the, our pit stall was uh, terrible having to come around the 19. And then the 10 coming around me. So just, you know, the day would have been a lot easier if I just didn't hit the wall yesterday. Kyle Larson brings it home ninth. Larson comes home ninth and leaves here ninth in the point standings. Denny Hamlin celebrates in Charlotte. Finally, he is a winner in the Coca-Cola 600.